Hello, everyone, and welcome to another season. What? Another season? Season two of the Tree of Geek. We made it through one. We're here for the second one. We're here for season two, episode one, Days of Future Geek. That's right. New year, new season. That's right. We got a lot of resolutions that we're not going to follow through with. I'm going to keep paying for a gym membership that I don't go to. And I still have Netflix. Why? I don't know. So in this episode, Josh, I figured it fits the beginning of the new year. Why don't we talk about what's coming down the pipe as far as geek culture is concerned? We're talking about TV movies, made for TV movies, soap operas. I don't know. Things that are cinema wise, things that are going to make me lose my train of thought like I, I normally do. But we're going to run through month by month, not get too super in detail. We're not going to give a lot of spoilers because these things haven't happened yet. But we're talking like this comic book TV show is coming out. This movie's coming out. This video game is coming out. What's our excitement level on these? Maybe we'll give a little bit of uh, the rumors that have been swirling around. Maybe we'll say this is coming out. We don't care and move along. I'm hoping this will pique everybody's interest into where it because not, we don't have TV guide anymore. I don't think is that a thing that we can still buy? In the grocery store, you got to no. like Google 15 different websites to find something that gives you a list of what's coming out. Reddit. We'll do it for you. Reddit. Yeah. Fair warning here. Uh, so don't so don't step on my neck at some point. Some of these dates might be wrong because some of these dates or some of these shows, movies, I found two or three different dates for. Hopefully I'm in the right slot. I use uh, an app on my phone called Series Guide. I punch in the TV show I'm watching. And it tells me when that show is coming out. Now, generally, there I think Letterboxd is pretty good as well. It'll tell you when new movies are coming out. Now, with all that rambling over, here is our rundown of 2024 release dates. Are you ready to get this ball rolling? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm ready. Are you? Well, just because I am long-winded and I need a little sip, I'm going to let you go first without even rolling. I'm just going to give you an at 20 right now. What is the first thing on your, and hopefully you went in chronological order. So <laughs> what is the first date that's on your list? So the first thing that's on my list, uh, taking a look down over it, which is not in chronological order. It was in the order that I randomly decided to look things up. Great. Looks like Madam Web, the wow. Sony Spider World movie coming out in, as of now, February of 2024. So, so we're skipping January altogether. I I, we we should have won by the month. We're skipping the whole entire month. Look, yeah, look, you put me in first. I, don't I, have I did. January. Okay. I, I, Go ahead for this, Madam Web. So, Madam Web, if you've seen the trailer, uh, you probably just turned this podcast off because 99% of the people I've talked to or interacted with on Reddit, real life, etc., well, they don't in any way want to see this movie made. Let's be honest, it's nothing more than Sony's contractual agreement to continually put out Spider-Man uh, franchised movies in order to retain the rights to owning Spider-Man. And It didn't work well with Hellraiser, and it's not going to work well here. Um, I think we should, when we give each title here, let's give each other our excitement level when we're done with the, the, the quick synopsis of what we're talking about here. Okay. Because I'm curious how low and how high some of these well, numbers so now, are going to be. I will say that when I first saw the trailer, I immediately got on Reddit, the comic book collecting subreddit I'm part of, and I posted a picture of, I have the first appearance of Madam Web. It's an old Spider-Man comic book. And I said, please, Sony, don't screw this up. And I, I wish I could tell you people were optimistic, but literally every single That's one. That's a waste of cast. Every single comment under it said, did you see the trailer? Or they already did. So the entire comic book collecting subreddit I'm part of, anyone who replied to that post apparently has very, very low hopes for this. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to be a Debbie Downer here, a Sour Susan. There is some good actors in here, some I've never heard of. I've, I've seen a couple of these actresses and some other things, and they're really well, but the track record, the track record of Sony is not giving me high hopes. Prove me wrong. Let me see I mean, this movie like and blow potential. my mind away, but I, I don't think it's going to. I feel like it absolutely has potential. I just think it's going to be the writing. And just from watching the trailer, they tried to shove like three different versions of Spider-Woman, you know, Madam Web, Spider-Woman, and then there was a whole other one that I didn't even recognize into one movie. And I just feel like it's going to be uh, either a sensory a overload. A mess. Pretty much. And so many random uh, posts on, you know, again, Reddit, Facebook, whatever. I saw people saying like, why is spider-man in this movie and why is he a bad guy it's like well that wasn't spider-man that was the villain 
Do I know who it is? No, I actually don't. It's I, never I don't a good sign when your audience is confused before they get out of their car in the parking lot and walk into the theater. Yeah. I'm going to cut this web short. Uh, I'm like, all right with because that. Because I refuse to ramble on for an hour about Madame Webb. So what, or Madame Webb. How excited are you three. for this? A three out of a hundred. Got it. No, three out of <laughs> I'm going to go with a three, man. It's, it's super low. Three out of ten. So it's, I'm going into this. They're not getting my movie money. I know that. I am going into this with basic hopes of a five out of ten i'm not going to go see it in theaters i'm, I'm just no, not no, it, it'll i will absolutely wait require it a different way i feel like sony's going to push it to uh streaming pretty quick yeah i'll see it then I'm, i'll absolutely see it I, I, well i'm going to tell our fans right now whenever just, we do see it you know whatever episode we're recording we're like yo man we just watched that man, uh, oh yeah dom web and well, uh it's like venom for me I, i'm sorry to say it but when the first venom came out i didn't really care at all but when i see it i see it i'm not gonna go out of my way yeah, well, I don't go out of my way to see a lot of things and in the theater anymore. I really it's genuinely hope that I'm surprised and I'm proven wrong. I, I hope this is a really good movie. I hope everything on this list is good. I, I just, but. I don't think, oh, this is a really horrible way to start this episode then. I don't think so, um, but a couple titles here in January. I'll, I'll just run through them real quick and then we can talk about them. Okay, so in order in January, this is what you got. January 11th, Echo on Disney+. Plus. On the 19th, you have Zorro, another remake on Amazon Prime. Uh, the 26th, you can kick somebody's ass playing Tekken 8. And uh, to be announced at some point in January, hopefully early, you have the new season, but not really season, of Doctor Who. So the first one there is Echo on Disney+. Plus. Oh, How, are, yeah. you, are you excited at all? Echo, I am Echo. a solid Man, four. I, I'll give it a four. A four. Um, four. And it's nothing against the character. It's just, I don't know. I'm no, not interested in the story whatsoever. The actress from Hawkeye. Well, she does a great job. I, yeah, I thought she was great. I, I don't just, need to know any more about her. Yeah, I'm not, you know, crazy excited about it. I know I said in another episode that I recently re listened to that, man, Marvel, use some of these other characters that you do. <laughs> and here they are. They're using another character and they're like, Michael, here you are. And I'm like, well, I'm not really. Eh. Well, and this is the whole reason that we it. talked about before how they're talking about a soft reboot of the MCU because the ones that they're bringing out now that nobody really knows, nobody really cares about. Yeah, I think this is going to be a, a one and done thing. I don't think it's going to go like much a single farther. season. Yeah, they're probably just like a limited thing. Yeah, you know? but you know, we, we talked about this once before as well. I'm actually really grateful for that because they are cutting out the, the filler. But at the but same time, I want time, a little bit of filler. It's yeah. not like I want a whole entire tub of whipped cream on right. my pumpkin pie. I just want a couple hefty scoops. Right. You want to have fun with the character too. Yeah. So there's Echo. Then the Zorro thing I heard about. I saw it on a list. You know, they've made a couple movies. It was huge black and white TV show. I so guess we're it's, talking it's like, another remake of Zorro. We're talking like uh, sword fighting yeah, Zorro? Yeah. I, not, I, not One Piece it, Well, Zorro? it says, determined to find out who killed his father, he will discover family secrets that will change his destiny forever. Five bucks says his father's still alive. Of course he is. <laughs> and he might even be the bad guy of it. I don't know. My expectations for this are low as well. But, hey, listen, not, every, not everything I put on here is I'm excited to, to watch. I just, it's in the realm of geek. And I promise you, there are some things on here that I, I I am genuinely excited for. Um, next up, Tekken 8. I was never a big Tekken fighter fan. You know, as far as, like, fighting games, I was more of a Mortal Kombat dude. But Tekken's been around forever, yeah. and I'm pretty sure there's, there's got to be more than eight of these. I mean, <laughs> but, I will say, oh, they've done, like, Tekken versus Mortal Kombat, Tekken versus Capcom. I mean, yeah, sure. like, they, they've all mixed it up. Uh, I know, like, when I, I, I worked... Know, the gaming community seems to be pretty well, when excited When I worked at GameStop, it. anytime a Tekken game would release or something in that area... It was usually a pretty big turnout for the pickup. I will say that so. the graphics of these new fighting games look. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Man, so, so good. I remember when Dead or Alive 3 came out for the original Xbox, and I played the shit out of that. That, that was fun. It had, like, the wrestler dude. and well, Then they had some volleyball thing, you know, that, that went south. Well, speaking of graphics of upcoming games. Where did it go north? Who knows? I know it's not 2024, but did you see... Am I about to start playing me a Tom Petty theme song right now? Because I am so jacked for GTA 6. Are you kidding me right now? I don't even care for 2025 because they just have even more time to fix whatever bugs might be there. Oh, yeah, yeah. And they're, they're taking in everybody's input. Well, apparently so many people had already leaked that this was coming out that Sony pushed the trailer out the day earlier. Oh, It was supposed okay. to come out like Tuesday morning or something, and they're like, oh, crap, we better do this Monday, whatever day it dropped. But... Well, all yeah. I know is I was I was on Reddit and someone took a you. shot for shot trailer right next to real news footage coming out of Florida. 
And it was like exact. Well, the dude with the tattooed face said he's like not happy about this. Oh, like really? the real guy. Yeah. And there's like the lady with the hammers. Like she's yeah. like, she's the, yeah. At least people are not happy that, listen, Rockstar don't care, man. No, no. They don't care. And and I'm glad they don't care because this world needs a little more backbone. Well, like, let's do it. Let's make some fun of people. Come make fun of me. Like, let's, like, let's go. This, I'm so, I can't even tell you how excited dude, I am for this. Yeah, and once those videos hit the news outlets, boom. Public domain, they were yep. free for all. And I'm going to run over so, so many, because I, I love running over people motorcycles in GTA. And I Wait, can, running them over with the motorcycle or hitting people on motorcycles? Well, I mean, you can go, you know, kind of get over in the lane and come flying back at them slam them I, 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 even if i'm in the middle of a mission if you're driving a motorcycle or a little crotch rocket i will stop and i will turn around and i will find you because i find it so hilarious i know i'm a it's, it's a deep dark seated messed up thing i just love running people over on motorcycles it's, again it's fun. 2025 2025 this is 2024 i know i'm talking about but there but you I, was, go. I was excited about it and then uh doctor who doctor who at some uh. point you know, uh, David freaking Tennant coming David back. David Tennant, yeah, yeah. By the time this is reaching you, you'll probably know exactly. But sometime here in January, it's supposed to coming out. I'm excited. I, mm. Ever since the Josie Whitaker, I've been like jonesing for some new Doctor Who. So yeah, I wasn't the I'm biggest excited. fan of Jodie Whitaker. I tried. She was up and down for me. I, I think tried, she did well in certain spots. Well, the problem every, is, I, I think that, I don't know. A lot of doctors for me were up and down. See, the problem is with but, every doctor, you got to figure out where they're at. Like they always try super serious. They always try super funny you got to find what balance that character that they're playing because you know every doctor is different you got to figure out okay what what's the right balance for this actor or actress yeah and i don't think they found it for her until close to the end well it was like at the end there they were like zoning in on a certain part of a storyline of some sort of romantic connection and then like that was the end of the season those last couple episodes, I'm like, okay, I'm really interested. Where are they going to go with this? Because they've shown a connection between her and this other character. And then, well, she's no longer the doctor. So now that character's gone. And I don't know. It just, it kind of bugged me that they, they finally found something that was interesting. Yeah. And then it was kind of gone, you know, but yeah. it is what it is. There is January. Do you have anything else for February? What, you're not going to ask me about January? Do you have anything else for January? No. No? Okay. Well, you, I figured you skipped right to... To February. Nothing else for February. So you don't have on February eighth Halo season two drops? Uh no. Did you watch I don't. season one? I did watch season oh, one. Oh man. And even though it caught I'm eight, excited for this one, guys. I'm gonna I'm gonna put it at a nine. I'm even a, though it caught um, a ton of hate. Uh it got hate. It well, got I, hate. I wasn't I, I'm not a video game player. It so. got hate because Master Chief took his helmet off. Oh um, but I, I John know. was mad about it, it too. He, was. he took his helmet off. John, I wish you put a helmet on. Yep. Well it's cause oh it is like Spider Man. Though the big appeal is that if the helmet's on, the mask is on, it could be anybody. Okay, Luchador but we know, stuff. we know it's not anybody, and I'm pretty sure the guy acting wants to get paid for his face on screen, too. Pablo Schreiber, man. Which, by the he way... He should be the new Sabretooth. Isn't that his brother? The original? Yeah, Leo Schreiber's half-brother. Okay, brother. that's what Yeah, I, I think we talked about this Yeah, before. we might have. And this dude's, like, big, man. He's, like, like six, seven, six, six. Yeah, he He's was a really big tall. dude, man. But, yes, I, I'm very excited for it now that you say that. Cause, yeah, I'm amped. Again, it caught hate, but I really enjoyed the even first Even Emily season. was really into it, too. Even I mean, Zach, who doesn't even like a lot of stuff that we like, he's like, dude, did you watch Halo? Did you watch Halo? I was like, yeah, man. It's like you're a couple months behind, bro, but well, yeah. So, I remember, like, the first time I watched the very first episode, like, it's kind of slow. It starts at that, uh, wh whatever it is. The, it's like the new show the, Foundation. It well, it's like the desert like that, planet, yeah. and it's like yeah. the mining system. I, I don't even know what they're and mining. And then somebody gets sort of, like, the body just explodes. Well, yeah, and then like, these yes. kids go up into the woods, and they find Covenant, and all of a sudden, all hell breaks loose oh it's great and it's a massacre and then all of a sudden you just see these spartans drop in and start destroying that and i'm like okay this and it just goes a miles an hour from yeah i'm like this mile an hour. is what i remember yeah it, it was great and i cannot wait for season two and we recovered madam webb on the 14th yeah yeah so that can just stay in the dusty webby closet do you watch uh ghosts the american version of ghosts on cbs no no, well, uh, season three drops on the fifteenth. Extremely hilarious. In the meantime, Paramount Plus, which I don't have, has decided to throw out the the British version. But very, very funny show. It's a continuing comedy of two bed and breakfast owners with a house full of ghosts, of which only Samantha can see. There's a dude that yep. doesn't have pants. Trevor, I have meant it, to watch it. Like I, I it's, a, it's they're half hour long. They're I, quick, I, easy comedies. I just haven't gotten around to watching it yet. You're gonna enjoy it. I, I believe it is the right mixture. Some of these type of shows, they have comedy that's just too cheesy or too forced or the jokes just never land. But yeah. they've taken good time with the character development of every single ghost. 
as long, I mean, as well as the humans that they interact with. It's, and some of the guest stars that pop in this are, are pretty good too. I don't know. I, I'm very, I'm going to give myself a seven, wow. 7.5. Okay. You know, only because it's CBS and I'm going to have to finagle my way to find a way to watch it. I don't know. It might be on Hulu live. I'm going to be able to record it. It might be. Yeah. It's so, worth looking yeah. into. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited enough to find a way to watch it. Well, if anybody out there listening knows how we can watch it, yeah. let us know. Yes. Yeah, uh, drop a line. Treeofgeek.com, contact us. Let us know how to watch your favorite TV shows. Without Paramount Plus. Or doing anything illegal. Legal? You mean like running people over motorcycles in GTA 6? Yes. Yes. Hey, do you like uh, you like the airbender guy? The guy with the, the arrow on his forehead? So, unfortunately, that's not something I ever got into. I know like, me, people me people right now are like, why are people you People look on at me show? stupid because I say, oh, that one movie was pretty cool. And they're like, what did you say? And they're going to like behead me because I've said this. <laughs> we have a couple friends like yep. that. Yeah. Uh, oh, but yeah. On the 22nd of uh, February, Avatar The Last Airbender on Netflix is going to drop. Now, I've seen the trailer. Looks pretty cool. I know my buddy Mike that uh, I play D&D with. He is a very big fan of the Airbender franchise. I guess you could say like, yeah, cartoons like they're not movie. really connected they're, but yeah like the whole thing some book. i know he he did mention it once but i don't really remember like if he was excited for it but i'm i'm willing to bet that yeah he's he's gonna be stoked for it i'll give it a six only because okay. i mean i'll check it out only because i watched i did some watch some episodes of the cartoon but it's a, such a dense cartoon like i caught like maybe season three episode nine so whatever was going on was some action, but yeah, I had no idea about the story. Like, and then obviously the movie was okay. So a third time around, I'm I'm gonna give it a seven. Well, I mean, I will say, even though I've never gotten into it, I, I do understand a little bit of like what it's about. Okay, you know, elemental bending. But I will say, I'm going to take time to watch it simply because. Oh, oh for sure, I have Netflix. Well, simply still. because I was proven completely wrong on my initial impressions of One Piece. Yeah. Because okay, I, that's, a, that's a valid point, bro. I valid saw point. the trailer. I thought that looks stupid. I don't. I don't care about it. I ignored it. Steep got us to well, I don't to watch it, and Aang it turned into like, stretches one. Stretches his arms anywhere. Well, no. so. <laughs> but I mean, it turned into one of my favorite shows. Like I, I've actually recommended it to people. Yeah. So I'm I'm willing to to give this one a shot well, because listen. I would like to be proven wrong. My friend messaged me not long ago when we were recording here, and uh, I didn't answer his call. And, uh, and I was like, I'm podcasting. And he goes, oh, that's cool. I'm watching One Piece. So, I mean, there you go. Well, did you tell him to go back to our, our episode on One Piece and hear our take on it? I've harped on him several times. And he won't listen to the podcast? He does. He does, you know. I will hunt you down. Uh, I have a special set of skills. He's far away. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever heard the Kermit the Frog, um, the take Orville? Him guy um orville redenbacher the spaceship um uh, seth Stewie. mcfarlane help me out here man seth mcfarlane seth mcfarlane yeah not todd mcfarlane seth mcfarlane is on one of those british shows todd mcfarlane amazing artist yeah just great saying. spawns cool oh yeah um well he was on a british show and they said hey how about you do the taken voice but you do it during doing kermit the frog and I don't know who you are, but I'm going to find you. It's, it's, Seth MacFarlane did it? Seth MacFarlane did it as Kermit the Frog. I would totally put that audio clip in this episode if I knew we wouldn't get sued. Would he sue us? Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. You That's know, a, I that needs to be of... our goal. Before the end of 2024, get somebody on our show. I thought that you said he wanted to sue me. I was like, do you have that any isn't money? us. <laughs> like, try and get somebody that people actually know on this show. Somebody famous. Yeah. So if you're famous and you're listening to us or right now. you know now, somebody that's famous and they owe you a favor. <laughs> pass that fuck along yeah. shout out to whoever bought my burger king today we were in line today i'm hungry i got a podcast coming up we get up to the the boot or to, to the little window there and lays oh don't worry about it. the lady in front of you paid for you that's like, awesome wow so you know and i don't that, have to do that awesome. so i gotta pass the buck along gotta pass that positive yep. energy man or hold I love the, that. or even hold the door open at a gas station yeah you know how people don't oh, yeah. do that? Like, I will sit there and wait 30 seconds. There's a lady coming in today. She had uh, her daughter up in her arms. I waited 30 seconds for that lady. I could have just easily went out the other door. I was like, nah, this woman's struggling. Let's help her out a bit. I want to see you hold the door at Walmart. Just stand there, <laughs> waving your arms, waiting for them to get there. Oh, man, that's great. <laughs> you got any, you just say no more for February, right? No, no. no. Unfortunately, I will say, look, I, I apologize, but I will be very honest and blunt right now. I am underprepared. I I'm gonna, no, no, no. Everybody, he's underprepared because he was taking so much of his time. He was sacrificing so much of his every day and all of his nights. Those poor kids never get to see their father because he's got to edit the podcast. 
Okay. He's like, little little Timmy's coming over there with the, you know, one, help me out. I need some bread. Well, look, no, go away. You, people don't understand how much it takes to take a three hours of recording and cram it into an hour and a half. Well, I saw, like, I shot you that message. You're like, oh, I got this much done. I was like, well, you don't got much more to go. And you're like, oh, that equals three hours. I think of I work. said, like, oh, yeah, I have like 25, 30 minutes left. Like, yeah, like, I have to listen to it, but I also have to cut it. I have to move it. I have to. I have to. I have to. Yeah. yeah. So in the meantime, I was the one preparing for but this. But the best part was so. I got to lay on the couch with my laptop on my lap, headphones on editing, while my wife watched a Christmas movie next to me because I hate all of those Christmas movies. I heard today that Tim Allen, you know, they just did the last one, that he was like absolutely horrible on the set of the last movie. And like he's a Detroit guy like me, but uh, what movie? Man, the the Santa, Santa Claus, Claus, like the very la- the, the ones coming out right now. Oh, the, it's yeah. Is that it's not a movie? It's a series, right? Yeah, I don't know. But he's done, done. Well, I don't know. He's just like super rude and mean to to a couple of the people on set. I guess he was really mean to an actress, and made her cry, and then when she talked to somebody about it, they said, "Oh, that was Tim Allen on a good day." Wow. Yeah, and oh, I've that... heard he's been a little bit iffy to deal with i mean I, i'm not personally there so maybe i'm wrong about this whole thing yeah. i'm just reading reports online that's a shame but, though if it's true yeah because i always found them super funny home improvement was my bread and butter as a kid oh absolutely Great show. <gasps> all right well let's move on to march all right moving on to march all right so first off on march 8th we got a quiet place day one the prequel of the prequel of the monster movie so they came out with the first one with the yeah. monsters you got to be quiet and then they came out with the next one that, that happened shortly after it first happened. between now and yeah. what happened. And now they're coming out with the one on the very first day it happened. Now, is it a movie or a series? It's a movie. Okay. It's a movie. So that's coming out. You know, I figured I'd, it's got aliens. It's a horror movie. Yeah. You know, the first two were okay. Uh, I'm, rock, I'm the, rocking a six on this. Do you consider it horror? Yeah, it's sci-fi horror. See, I, I look at stuff like that as more it's suspense. Like alien, alien sci-fi horror. Okay. People yeah, are getting I'm, murdered and ripped apart and shit. I give it a, know, a so. six or a seven because, honestly, I love John Krasinski. I mean, he will always be Jim from the office for me yeah. always but when he stepped into that directing area and he got into the quiet place and i'm just when i first heard about it i thought it was kind of a dumb premise i'm gonna, i don't know i just oh the yeah i can hear you based on sound yeah okay we've seen stuff like that before but then i actually sat down and watched it and i think i've seen it probably five or six times I've since each one once i the first one just holds a place like, i don't know i really really enjoyed the first one well it threw me off the the prequel one that i watched has the peaky blinders guy in it um uh, played scarecrow from batman oh um, i know who you mean yeah i for some reason 28 days later um and he's a great actor but the entire time i'm watching it i'm just thinking peaky we had just binged like all the seasons of peaky blinders <laughs> and i i couldn't get i don't know it just it was stuck in my head it, i mean it was good but i don't think it it was matched the potential of the first movie killian murphy cillian murphy cillian murphy Cillian, I think I, it's cillian there's murphy. a c not a k yeah mr murphy He's a good actor. He's oh, a he's very great. good actor. He, apparently, he's getting he's another one's being eyed in one of these new Marvel movies. They're maybe hmm. they're saying maybe he might be the next Doctor Doom. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. He feels too lanky. Like Doctor he, Doom he's was a smaller a, dude. Doctor yeah. Doom was a pretty bulky yeah. guy though. Yeah. That's why John Hamm I thought was a good a good fit. John Hamm from uh, the old Fantastic Four. Nip Tuck. No. No. Who no, am I thinking That's of? Julian McMahon. Oh. Okay. John Hamm's from Mad Men and from. Oh, gotcha. Uh, a couple of other good times at the El Royale. He was in that movie too. Well, it's just cat and that had Thor in it too. That's a great guys. Get out there and watch that movie. It's old, but <laughs> go and watch that movie. Anyway, we, we are rambling, 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 rambling. That's all right. It's fine. That's this is why you have to take six hours to cut things out. This is true. Because <laughs> <laughs> Michael won't shut up. Well, here's uh, something I'm not super excited for because I thought the first one was a little bit boring, and I even tried to watch the original, and then I tried yeah. to watch the original series that Sci-Fi came March out March Madness. With. Well, basketball? Yeah, I'm not. <laughs> no. You know, go Wolverines, I, I guess. Uh, oh, but 70... it's, it's sports ball. I don't know what's happening right now by the time you listen to this, but the Michigan Wolverines are ranked number one. They're in the playoffs. Bring it, Alabama. Let's go. Hey. No, I'm... All I know, it's not even sports ball. It's sports I feel bad for Florida. Puck. I will say that we talked crap about Florida earlier. Florida State Seminoles, they got they got robbed. They should have been they should have been in there. Look, I don't follow any football. I'll be honest. Undefeated. I follow hockey. Couldn't join. And the only thing I know is the Flyers played the Pittsburgh Penguins, the big rivalry. I'm a Flyers fan, and they actually beat them in a shootout. Now the next night they lost to them. But the point is they beat them once. 
And I was very happy with that. Better than no times. This is true. All right, moving along. No more sports ball. Let's go sports ball. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, 15th of March, Dune Part 2. Everybody who's everybody's in this, I just got, I was I was like, maybe this one's going to be more exciting than the other ones I watched. So, and you, I was bored out of Did you watch mind. Part 1? I did. Uh, I watched it last year. I liked bored it, out of my mind. but it definitely felt like a setup. A setup movie. Like oh, it, you know, uh, for sure. I mean, my my personal take is I'm going to take the six-hour sci-fi was it, miniseries that they did back in, like, what, the 90s? Yeah, like yes. Sting was in it. I love that. And then they did another six-hour uh, Children of Doom series. That's a that's a 12 hours. It's of a huge franchise happiness. for, like, a fan base. There's a lot of fans oh, yeah. in these. Oh, yeah. And I want to like it. I'm and then my brother in like Star Trek Star Wars. Why wouldn't I want to watch Doom? I like tremors. It's like a good mix, right? But yeah, um, I don't. Know. I just that's a big so tremor. Much talking, so much talking. Those sandworms are big tremors. I mean, maybe I'll give it a second shot when the other one comes out because I feel like I need to watch the second one. It's like I'm obligated now. Watch them in a row. I know sometimes movies like that. If you rewatch the setup immediately followed by the sequel, it usually flows together much nicer, and you have more respect for the original. Then, well, not the original, mm. but the the first. Interesting thought. Yeah, you know. That's what I did with Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, part one and two. Get out of my mind, man. I, I had to watch one because one was super boring. All right. I, it, Natalie, John, if you're hearing this and arguing with me, shut up. The first one was pretty boring. I mean, except for the ending. But if you watch that one and then watch the second one as like one big movie. Oh, you talking about the Deathly Hallows one. I thought you talked about like Harry Potter one. Okay. Oh, no, that movie was great if you're eight. I told you I didn't have any Doctor Who's to watch anymore. So I was going to watch before bed. I've been watching the Harry Potter series. I watched like a 20 minute, 30 minute bit of it and I fall asleep. See, I couldn't do that. Part two I right would now. be awake. It, it's been years since I've seen them all the way through. Okay. Like I've seen bits and pieces on like USA or TNT. Well, see, or that would make it worse. Cause in my head, I'd be like, I don't remember exactly what happened. Well, there's some parts of, or some stuff in part two that I'm like, I don't really remember this. And like I looked at it. Chamber of said, Secrets part yeah, two. Yeah. I was like, I don't okay. think Chamber of Secrets really holds up anymore. I don't think it's that. And she goes, eh, I'm not really into this one either. I'm like, well, that's okay. We only have an hour to go. So. But I then, feel know. that if you're over the age of 16, Prisoner of Azkaban is when things pick up for you. Like, I tried to get my wife to read them. She got through, I think, the first two, and she's like, eh, it's not really for me. I'm done. I'm like, you literally just got to the best book, the third one. Well, that's why I'm excited for the TV series. It gets series. so dark, and it gets not so good, and I don't know how I feel about the TV series. I just well, don't. we'll gauge our excitement when it comes to when the it comes 2025 out, yep. calendar. Uh, when well, we're what, too busy, we're at, when we're not playing GTA, yeah. we can watch. Well, yeah. what's your what's your gauge on uh, on Dune too? Five. I'm All right, just yeah, a plain I'm, Gene five. I'm probably around a, a four. It's not that I absolutely hated it. I just I, hopefully there's a little bit less talk and a little bit more action. Not so much psychological stuff. I yeah. would go in around a four just because it was never a huge thing that I was into. And I'll be honest, the only reason I really watched it was Stay for honest. Zendaya. And even she didn't impress me that well, much. The, the, I guess the, the reason I gave it one well, more point. She was one point. of the only actresses in that movie I actually knew. Like There's a lot of very Well, I did know one people. other one, but I didn't know that I knew her. The Chalamet's mom... It's from Silo, and she was from Rings of Power. But Rings of Power wasn't out really? yet when I watched it, and well, I didn't Silo watch Silo yet out. either. <laughs> Which, you know, hey, thanks for show. Did the you one finish episode, it? I watched the whole entire season, and I am excited to see <sighs> the next two seasons. So, yeah. But that's not 2024. What is in 2024 yeah, I know. I hope, is... I was hoping, like, when we were doing this, I was researching, like, please tell me they're doing the second part. I think it's going to be 25. It will be. Now, yeah. my guess is it will be. I think be. she needs to do her Rings of Power stuff, and then she'll do the, the mm. silo. I bear it with that. Yeah, I'm, I'm cool. Again, I actually liked Rings well, of Power. Well, they say Rings of Power might not come out till the end of 2025. Seriously, I thought yeah. it was supposed to be like hey, mid. Well, uh, we will say that the, uh, quantity. This, the strikes, the sag after, is, oh, did I say that right? Yeah. They really pushed a lot of stuff. Like, a lot uh -huh. of things got screwed up because of those. Sure did. But thankfully, they're over. Right. And that's why we're, uh, we're going to get the Ghostbusters frozen empire on the 29th yeah i did see that yeah um i'm giving this a seven and a half i did like did the you last watch one. the okay yeah i've seen them all i uh, yeah seven and seven point five so this one some artifact happens we're gonna get another ice age of the course spangler's gotta stop it i'm gonna give it a six uh i didn't care as much for the well, last we're getting one more bill murray and everybody in this one like they're gonna be okay. more they're in so it's New gonna York be less City. about the next generation yeah it's like okay. them all actually being together this time. See, i didn't care as much about that first one well yeah, first one. The last one they did, I, I don't know. I just, I couldn't get into it. Well, I thought they were uh, kind of taking a little bit of uh, the kid from Stranger Things. Like, oh, here's a Stranger Things kid. Boom. Yes. yes. All Rudd's big right now. Boom. That was a big part of my they issue. shoehorned them in there just because of who they were. Yeah. But I did enjoy the movie, though. 
Okay. Except for, see, like, when the main villain shows back up and she just kills the other villain. <laughs> Dead. See, I'll have to give it another shot then. Because I was very iffy. Well, I'm not, if I was to rake, or not rank, but rate the movie, I would give it a 7. I right. wouldn't give it an 8. I'd give it a 7. It's a solid movie, but it's not, like, a great movie. It's not an awesome movie. It's not a perfect movie. It's a, it's a, it's a good, right, really solid movie. Okay. That puts us at the end of the first quarter of the year. Uh, Baldur's Gate 3 is coming out in, it just says early 2024, so I don't know exactly oh, the when. Copy. Yeah, so I figured out ah, the first quarter would be a good place to throw this in there. They are doing a full physical deluxe edition for $80. Wow. This is why I still haven't played this game, because of the price tag. It is an amazing game. It did just game. win Game of the Year at some award that I can't quite place. I could have Googled it this entire time, I didn't, but just one game of the year. So. Doesn't matter. The point yeah. is, it was an amazing game. It's still an amazing. It has replay value because you can make different decisions every time. Well, I had a choice. I was like three prong choice. I was like, I can spend 60, 70 bucks on a game. I can stay up super late and play D&D with a group I was invited to play with and be super tired the next day. Or I can grab a group of people together um, and say, listen, I've never DM'd before. How about I do a DMing thing here? And I went with option three. (laughs) So this is... I'm going to be very soonly in the past days of future past um, uh, being uh, DMing my first D and D game. And uh, I'm terrified and excited at the same time. Well, so, I know that you're a creative person and I think you're going to love it. I really do. I hope so. And well, we already booked ourselves out for like six months, so we're not going to stop for a little bit. I sat down with the people weekly, said, bi-weekly uh, once a month. Okay. Yeah. To fit with everybody, you know, people got their kids and oh, yeah, schedules absolutely. and we're like, Bring up your calendars right now. Let's well, go. That's why the group that I'm in, we, we play at nine o'clock at night from like nine to midnight or so, because literally you put your kids to bed, your spouse or significant other goes to bed. Yeah. You actually have time. The problem is most of us work in the morning and it, it is a pain. Yeah. Like but... I can't drive the six, seven hours no. worth of drive no. time. Like I need more than five hours of sleep to do that. And Fridays are rough. They're rough. So I just, I couldn't do it. I wanted to play. But, you know, we'll, we'll see what goes on here. What night are you playing? Uh, Fridays? It's either Fridays and Saturdays. Oh, there you go. Yeah. That won't be as yeah, bad. And like, if I play on a Friday and I work Saturday, I work for three and a half hours and I just sit there. I'm not doing anything. I'm not going anywhere. So it's... Right. So moving into April. Yep. April. Do you have anything for April? I do. Okay. What do, you, what do you have in April? April 12th. Okay. I got something on the same day, but go ahead. I'm guessing what it's the got? same thing. Is it a series by Amazon Prime, maybe? It might be a post-apocalyptic thing with Walton Coggins. The Amazon Prime Fallout series comes out on April 12th, 2024. It's got the girl from Yellow Jackets. I am dropping a solid 7 out of 10 on this because I'm very excited, but I'm also really skeptical they're going to screw it up. Well, I've never played the game, but the fact that Walton Skyrim Coggins is in it. in a dystopian world. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people say I was like, oh, you know I mean? You know what I mean? Like, eh. well, why do people say, well, to be honest? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, I am 7.5 on this one. Only because I know some of the actors that are in it. I saw the, the trailer. It looks colorful. It looks that that dog looked carrying yeah. an arm. Amazon puts money into their shows. Even if they're a show that you don't really care about the story, they're always slick looking. They get some decent actors. They are nev- they never phone it in. No, but my Bezos only concern... actually does something with his money. But my only concern yeah. is that they also tend to be very liberal when it comes to the source material. And I say that looking at Rings of Power. Yeah. They, While they, they I enjoyed it, the Lord of the Rings fanatic in me was screaming because so much of it was incorrect. So much of it was done wrong. So well, much of it like, wasn't accurate. I, I was even a guy that didn't read the books. I still had the cliff notes of who some like I I'm a world building guy. So like when I wanted to know about like what is the earth that Middle Earth is on? What continents does it have? How is it made? What are the gods? So I'm like looking at all these things for like a year. And then, I you know, I see the show. I'm like, but that's not how it went. They like smushed. Yep. Timeline together. They just, I guess, because I'm like, this dude shouldn't be alive right now. <laughs> Why is this dude chilling here oh, right you mean now? Like when they put, what is this the old Lord doing right like, like, now? Like one of my the biggest, Goonies cast a couple boobies. <laughs> like one of my biggest issues was the way they showed Mount Doom being created. Amazing sequence. I thought it was so cool, but it's horribly inaccurate. <laughs> it, it was originally created by Morgoth, who was actually Sauron's Dark uh-huh. Lord. He was like the Sidious to the Vader. Yes. You know I mean? Yeah. Like, 
okay, that's a really cool effect. I thought you just when, did when I first there. heard this was coming out, I thought we were getting Morgoth. I thought that's I where we too. were going to be. I thought it was going to be Morgoth. I was like, we're and doing we like see, early. Hell we'd yeah, see man. the rise of Sauron. And said this is taking place like right after Morgoth was defeated. Sauron is his general. He's out there in the world. We don't know where he is. Pretending he doesn't know who he is. I don't know. Whatever. It, uh, but. Yeah. I didn't like the alley scene, but what's not? We're gonna have a Lord of the Rings episode one day. Oh, absolutely. we're gonna have a Middle Earth episode. We're gonna do it. We're gonna do it for sure. What are we gonna call that one? I don't know. Something, um, something about being in a ring, like a <laughs> wrestling ring. Maybe. Oh yeah, we got the this. Olympic rings of some sort. No, that doesn't work. No, no I'm just <laughs> saying the rings. I'm just talking about a figure for the picture. Cage ring. I don't know. Uh, moving on. Okay. So, what else do you have in April? All right, so you said Fallout. Um, also on that day in theaters, if you like monsters, you have Godzilla X mm. King, the New Empire. The trailer if actually you listen looks to, good. Well, I maybe I didn't really watch it, and if you listen to Dead Horse Beatdown, my yeah. you can tell my level's probably at a three here. Yeah, like, yeah, I, I can I'm not that. gonna go see it. I'm not gonna. I, oh no, I, I mean the trailer looks I, I good, but I've never even seen Kong. I think that's what it was called. The movie I Jack. saw Skull Island. That was it. What was the one with Jack Black? Which one was that one? That might have been Skull Island. Oh, that was just King Kong. Okay, yeah. That's bad. Well, like, man, I was in Arizona then. That was a long time. Well, I saw it opening I just, weekend. I'm not into a lot of those, like the Godzilla movies, stuff like that, which is weird considering Jurassic Park is one of my favorite like, movies. Well, you know, it's dinosaurs. Yeah, but we also talked about this before. Godzilla's not a dinosaur. He's actually a kaiju. kaiju. Yeah, I just re-listened to this episode. <laughs> Dotson, Dotson, he'll just do that episode over again. Nobody cares. <laughs> Nobody actually goes. Yeah, okay, all right, all right. So I'm getting some time travel issues here, man. Deja vu. All right. Uh, so yeah, Godzilla. And then this one I'm excited about, and I'm trying not to read much about it because I'm talking about a part two, which part one's about to drop, probably about the time that we're recording here, roughly. On the 19th of April, Rebel Moon Part 2 is a Zack Snyder joint. It's a continuation of Part 1, Children of Fire, which I don't know the exact date of when that one comes out, but I, I think it's around now or around Christmas Yule time. So it looks like a really cool big sci-fi thing. So I'm going right. to say a six and a half, seven. I don't know much about it, and I don't want to until I see it. It just it's I've heard yeah. a lot of rumors that it's good. See, I'll give it a six, and I'll probably see it just because I'm still riding the Zack Snyder high from the Justice League Zack Snyder cut. Like, I'm still... Yeah. Are you? I, it's one of those things where, like, I haven't seen anything by him since, so in my mind, he's still amazing. I remember seeing 300 for the first time. Oh, yeah. My my parents came to uh, my my basic training graduation, and they're like, well, we can go off base. What do you want to do? And I was like, well, this 300 movie's coming out. So what was, they took me to see 300, and, man, I was like, what? Zack Snyder, I, I think he gets a more of a bad rap than what the guy deserves. The, he's out there like every other filmmaker trying to do his thing. And if you don't get so sour and nitpicky, his movies aren't that bad. I mean, so blood disappears and he changed up some things about some heroes. Who, I mean, it's it there for fun. It it's happens. just it's popcorn fun. So oh, I'm excited yeah. for this. After that, a game slash TV show. It was pretty popular back in the day. I don't know if the game's still popular, but they're coming out with a, another movie. On the 26th, you get Return to Silent Hill. Ooh. Yeah. So it's a when a mysterious letter calls him back to Silent Hill in search of a lost love, James finds a once recognizable town and encounters terrifying figures, both familiar and new, and begins to question his own sanity. You know, I never played the games. I, I liked the first movie. The screwed thought, up. Uh, yeah, they're, they're twisted. They're weird. Oh, yeah. Uh, if I remember correctly, I might get butchered in the comments that we don't get. So and slash. I'm not that worried about it. If I remember correctly, though, Silent Hill was originally based off of a town Centralia. in Pennsylvania. Yes, yeah, Centralia, yeah. Centralia, where it's all you can't even get there now. It was a massive coal mining town. The mines caught fire under the town, and, and to this day, it's still churning and burning. Mostly toxic to be there because the constant fumes and smoke coming up out of the ground. And they based Silent Hill roughly off of that idea because it's always foggy, it's always dark. Yeah, yeah. It's, and did uh, you know oh, this upsets me? I always wanted to get there because there was a a strip of highway that they closed off yeah, right by there. That's what I mean. Like the highway, they've they people spray painted it and everything. Yeah, and you can't. They they shut. You can't get there no it's more. It's gone. Yeah. No, like they they, they, they buried it. Oh, they buried it. They buried it. They planted grass. Like it's gone. You cannot yeah. get to it. And it sucks. I've seen pictures. If you if you don't know what I'm talking about, look up well, Centralia. Centralia. Yeah. Central IA Pennsylvania. Uh, the 
it's the coolest looking thing. I mean, it's closest than we had around here to like a full on ghost town. Well, we have race town. You know, that was a, we mean, a the, horror movie the town at the that too. under down at the bottom of the lake. <laughs> yeah. That, you know, rent your boats and do all your things. And there's a town under you. So that's cool. Yep. Pennsylvania is a cool place, man. I like it. I like it a lot. Well, okay. Let's, let's calm enough. down. I, like, I like it, it enough. enough. I mean, yeah, it, it's not Jersey or Florida. So, um, and then, uh, this is weird that I don't have a date. And even they, the people have made this, haven't put it out there, but the final season of Star Trek Discovery does not, they say it comes out in April, but they have no solid date. And I am excited. I want to see how this wraps up. I think they're going to put all their phasers to kill. And I think they're going to uh, put the warp drive to 11.5, you know, and, uh, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't I know. Like You're it. bobbing your head and just, I lost my train of thought. But Well, I, I don't know anything about Star Trek. I'm sorry. I know. I know you don't, but this is uh, wrapping up a series that a lot of people weren't huge on. It was a very different type of Star Trek. It was well, this not is the one that serialized... you said that like Will Wheaton came back in season no, two. No, that's Picard. That's oh, okay. Picard. Never yeah. mind. Yeah, this is a time traveling one that was before Kirk, but now it's after all the series. It's super far in the future. They made the Klingons look different. It was a slower paced show. A lot of people just like this isn't my Trek, and they got really upset. And uh, but I'm glad that CBS is still going to give them that final season and let them finish it up. So, yeah, yeah, no, that's I'm, I'm, I'm on an eight. And they said this season is not going to be a giant galactic threat that's going to destroy the universe. It's something different. So Ooh. maybe somebody heard me somewhere <laughs> bitching and bitching and bitching. But hey. there's there are some characters on that show. I do enjoy. I do like it. Jumping oh, into May. Jumping into May. Did you see uh, what's coming out? that you may or may not have mentioned once before in a previous episode. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. More Planet of the Apes. That's what we need. Yes. This one, okay, so after Caesar dies at some point, one of the movies I never watched, now his <laughs> son is trying to figure out his place in the ape world. That's what this is all about. We're going to continue it on. and I, Maybe Vin Diesel's going to show up in this one. Maybe we'll get some cars in there. Maybe some oh, Star Wars. Let's just throw them all together. How about some Avatar things flying? For God's sakes, another Planet of the Apes movie. I, maybe you guys like them. I'm sorry for crushing your I really want somebody but... to like edit Vin Diesel looking over, and instead of Brian sitting there in his equipment, you see Caesar sitting there like, <laughs> family. That's what he, he just looks at Vin Diesel. Family. <laughs> Hey, I don't, did you ever watch the the chimpanzee movie with Michael Broderick? Uh, that's the guy I work with, Michael Broderick. <laughs> He's the salesman. Shout out, Mike. Uh, great help this week. <laughs> Matthew Broderick. There was a movie called uh, Project X. No. Came out in the 80s. Matthew Broderick is, uh, I'm saying his name weird. I don't know why I'm saying that way. But he ends up working in this place where they experiment on monkeys. And it's a hard felt. I had like this little chimpanzee uh stuffed animal i call virgil that was the name of the monkey in the movie it's great it's a gem of the 80s uh, it was after he did the the bueller movie so check it out project x that's a, a monkey movie people should be watching right there you know what else they should be watching what's that did you ever see the one i think it was 80s with clint eastwood oh any which way any which way you can yeah. and any which way, way but lo loose loose yeah left turn clyde <laughs> <Yeah>. boom <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, Clint Eastwood with an orangutan. Oh, it's yeah. so... Those movies are amazing. It I, reminds me of Will uh, Will Ferrell and uh, Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back, where he's the wildlife guy. And <laughs> yes. it's not a monkey. <laughs> uh, yeah, go watch Jay and Silent Bob if you want to see some really good human interactions with some, with some primates. Yes. There we go. Yeah, that's a great movie. Um, that's all I got for May. May, yeah. May's looking pretty slim. Well, like I said, the the strikes are definitely going to slow some things down. But. Yeah, yeah, because I only got one thing for July as well, and this one I put in here because it's got the guy that played Ned in the Spider Man movies. He's going to be in a horror movie called oh, Horror. You mean Scope. June? June? You, you said July. You mean June? June? June. Yeah, okay. I meant June. I'm sorry, I can't read. What's his name? Uh, did I write it down? Okay, well, let me just read this. Jacob Batalon tackles the horror genre with a new movie in 2024. After starring alongside Tom Holland in three Marvel Cinematic Universe Spider-Man movies, Batalon now takes center stage in a movie about friends who begin to die connected to the fortunes of their horror scopes. And it's spelled horror scope, by the way. <laughs> you know, you couldn't. Couldn't let that pass. You couldn't pass that up. It marks the directorial debut of writer Spencer Cohen, who did The Expendables 4 
And in Hellberg, Horoscope's cast also includes Humberly Gonzalez, Olwen Fiore, Alana Bowden, and others that I have no idea who they are. But I wasn't going to put this on here first, but I was like, this is a geek thing. And I've already stated my case for horror movies are geek territory. That I was like, oh, it's got Ned in it. So Ned, who is Jacob Batalon, Battalion? I don't know. But yeah, he's in it. So if I read my Aquarius horoscope, it would tell me how I was going to die. So that's what that's about. What I'm not super just, excited, but what if I you mean, just don't read it. What if somebody reads it to you, though? What if you have an app? Does it work for apps? I don't know. It's mm. it's a thing. Watch Neil deGrasse Tyson talk about horoscopes and how the stars have moved in the sky. Like, they're, it's come on, people. I mean, I'm a spiritual guy, and I got some beliefs that are way different than other people. But at some point, you have to be like, listen calm mm. down <laughs> well, I mean, i've read before that most of the stars you see in the sky have burned out millions of years ago and i've seen somewhere like there's probably some out there that the light hasn't even reached us yet like why well, there's this whole new big bang thing i saw the other day where some of the particles that they're getting and some background radiation i don't know how they read this stuff but it's maybe it's older or i don't know it's a whole thing they're rediscovering something i don't know something big happened that wasn't very informative at all what i just explained no. but there's some new stuff about the big bang going on some, so some new big so research you happened. google it yeah something happened so something happened <laughs> that now makes them think something else has happened yes got it good good yeah, good yeah, great listen i am not an astrophysicist so let's be clear on that but what I am is a podcaster who's talking about movies that are coming out in July. June. Dead. No, I'm on oh, July. Okay. We're I'm on, on July. July. Yeah, All so right, we're on <laughs> July now. July. And, you know, I'm going to... The one I've been the, looking forward to. This one we're going to talk about. This is the most anticipated of the year. And July the 28th. the only Marvel movie coming out next year. Pure this, Marvel movie. Sorry, this Pure year. Pure Marvel. And, I mean, it used to be a Fox movie. So, but yeah, basically the only Marvel cinematic movie, Deadpool 3. Wolverine, Sabretooth, Cyclops, TVA, everybody's up in this. Starring Ryan Reynolds. And we Hugh all know Jackman. Hugh Jackman is coming back as Wolverine. And it's not a guy who just has something stapled to his face, like a picture of Hugh Jackman. It's actually Hugh Jackman, who's looking jacked. He by does. The way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's in his 60s. Yeah, I got. I'm pretty well, sure he was in his 60s when I looked. Yeah. He's and probably he, like 61, he's something like that. Like yeah. solid, too. So the downside to this is that I've seen so many spoilers and behind the scene pictures and, and I don't want to see them anymore because 55, he's 55. He's 55. Okay. He's 55. Well, I don't want to see any of the spoilers anymore because I feel like it's going to ruin key points. Like we, yeah, we talked about this off camera. Yes. Like it, we, we know it's going to involve the TVA. Like it's already mic. been confirmed. What's that? Said off camera and then off mic. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah, we already know it's going to be involving the TVA. We already, I mean, everyone, I think, at this point has seen a picture of Ryan Reynolds, Deadpool, and Wolverine in whatever they want to call that the end, the dead zone, what, with the big 20th Century Fox logo behind them. Yeah, but I just saw pictures about that that I didn't want to see. Yes, exactly. I've seen. What... I thought it was about a vehicle. I was like, dude, I can see a vehicle. I don't care about a vehicle. But then there was other yep. pictures attached, and now I've been spoiled. I didn't want to be spoiled. Yes, I'm not exactly. happy about it. Yeah, and it, as much as I'd love to sit here and talk about it, I mean, my I'm a nine out of ten solid. Oh, me too, I mean, for sure. We absolutely agree. But uh, I don't want to speculate on it too much for fear of well, speculation is one thing, but talking about the spoilers is a whole other thing. The leaked set photos, and I mean, except for the one of you know where Ryan Reynolds is putting his own out. I'm gonna, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's his X and Twitter and all. It's all it's all funny stuff. I'll level with you here though. There's been something growing inside me. This this irritation lately when it comes to the MCU, and it's not Kevin Feige that's doing it. It's not Bob Iger. It's the fans. What's going on is we. It's just rumor, rumor, rumor. Yeah. Doctor Doom, Kang, Deadpool, Fantastic Four. X Men, rumor, rumor. This guy's getting cast. This lady's getting cast. She's coming back. It's just, it's burning me. Maybe I burn out on this. These, yeah. There's just so many rumors, and all these leaks just keep happening. It's taking away some of my enjoyment. I think, as far as the MCU is concerned, I think I need a detox. I do, and I'm, and I'm, and I'm glad. My excitement is at a seven point nine that there's not coming out with really anything. I'm not counting. The Sony movies, like Deadpool, like really is the only solid kind of Marvel thing. And I'm kind of glad for that because I think we need to take a break. I think they need to regroup. 
I think us fans need to regroup. I think we need to uh, rinse out our mouths and just be like, okay, let's go back to 2025 and let's, you know, make me want, make me desire what's coming out. Well, and if you go back and look at the MCU history, it wasn't, oh, we're getting three movies this year. It was, what, we had Iron Man in, I think, 05. Hulk was later 05. But then we didn't get, I think it was Thor until like seven or eight. Yeah, they took their time. Like, now, granted, they didn't have the money machine behind them then that they do now. No, but, but it took built anticipation yes. for the next one. Anticipation. And it was, oh, you know, we're going to learn about Thor in this upcoming movie. That means it gives you time to actually look into Thor. Well, I need time to digest some of these things, too. It's like, oh, you, yeah. you, you're no done eating your cheeseburger. Like, Here, have some pie. Oh, what's that? Here's a slice of turkey. You're like, dude, calm down, man. Like, like they pushed out uh, Far From Home so quick. Or not yeah. Far From Home. Yes, far from home. They pushed it out so quick right after Endgame. And I understand, okay, they were showing uh, Peter's remorse and his, his, you know, how he was dealing with the loss of Tony Stark, but we didn't need it like three days later. There's another podcast where I talk about, I don't want some of these characters till later. Make it make sense. Don't give them to me just be like, yeah, I want Dr. Doom. I do. But let's make it make sense. Yeah. I do not want to see a Dr. Doom thing going on in Deadpool 3. And they're like, oh, well, here's a Fantastic Four bit, and here's, the, you know, we're going to... Man, I just, I understand with the multiverse, you're going to have to show certain things, but they need to just slow the roll a little oh, yeah. bit. But I know the mouse wants money, so... Yep. He's going to sell your soul after he <laughs> bought mine and resold it. Yep. See, that's I agree completely. Uh, little mini rant for just, you guys out there. Yeah. <laughs> just give us time. Like That's why I, I even said before, I'm so skeptical. In the Dead Horse Beatdown, I brought this up. The Marvel reboot, it, it needs to wait. I mean, I know they have like their, like what, next 30 years planned out for us. As soon as they reboot it, they're going to start pumping out these characters that we, oh, that we know and love. They're going to pump them out like crazy and we're going to hate them. Like, yeah, they're Roman reigning us right now. For wrestlers out there, for wrestling fans, Vince McMahon, WWE, Roman Reigns just has been champion for like six years or, or something. Like he just never loses. He, he's been force fed to fans like this is the man he's you have to like him he, you know, he beat John Cena he beat everybody I feel like that's what they're doing with this not mm. like they're forcing it well oh no this is what you're going to enjoy these are the movies we're going to give you you have to enjoy them like that's just the way it's going to be suck it up buttercup sit at the table till your peas are gone well no how about I just don't eat dinner with you at all like I'm getting <laughs> to the point now where I'm just you know like I used to be yeah. so excited you know, I'd like get a cam video or something to be like, oh, wow, that might be a fuzzy version of this, of this comic book, you know, cause I don't, yeah. but now I'm like, you know what? I can wait another year until it hits video or streaming yeah. because I'm just, That's I'm like, not like mi- saving up uh, my change to go see something. Now. The Marvels. I'm sorry to say, but I just, yeah, I've, I watched it, but it wasn't in theaters. I mean, I, just, I have no like, friend of a friend, man, crazy desire to go see it. Like I, I would have. Like, I, I was excited to see Captain Marvel. That was a letdown, for the most part. I mean, it's a good movie, but it, it was subpar compared to the rest of the Marvel universe. But then this one comes around, and, like, I, I'm so burnt out on all the series, all the movies. Like, I, Don't get me wrong. I mean, I was it's, it's super excited for Loki Season 2, but that's because I'm, like, heavily invested in that character. Well, there wasn't a lot of other Loki-ish stuff going on. Like, there wasn't another show that had to do with it. There wasn't another movie that had to do with it. And well, another, like, after it wasn't the first being pumped season, to you. Well, and after the first season, I bought the big omnibus of Loki, God of Stories. Yeah. Which, I'll let you borrow it if you want. Like, it's crazy the way everything intertwines. And, and I'm like, okay, I wonder if that's what they're going to do. And they, they kind of did. I mean, yeah, they hinted at stuff. Kind of. Like, it gives you time to get invested. Like, we had a full year or more in between season yeah, one and like two. Yeah, like I said, there wasn't three other Loki esque right. connections hitting you at the same time and the marvels i will say was not that bad of a movie it wasn't great but i think it was better in quantum mania i'm saying it right now but i'd have to watch them but i've only one sample of one each you know let me see the marvels in a different format yeah you know well i didn't know this but i guess the main villain in the marvels is actually tom hiddleston's real life wife wow the female who plays the main no villain idea. i don't know what her name is that is I remember. that's his real life wife yeah Oh, because they're doing an interview with him about Loki season two and how oh, I can't tell you anything just yet because the finale hadn't come out yet. It was a while back. But Marvel, you know, he was married and he had mentioned about his. Oh, my better half is, you know, whatever. And so I looked it up and yeah, sure enough, that's who it is. 
wow, you learn something new every day. The more you know, folks, the and more I'm you know. And I'm still standing by what I said a long time ago about how they're going to bring Quasar in. Wendell Vaughn, bring because it, man. Bring it. the bangle that uh, Little they're, Ms. Marvel well, they has. They call them quantum bands in the movie. They call okay. them quantum bands. They but do. The one that she has, the villain, they go together, and that yeah. is Quasar. Well, I mean, Quasar is him. one he uses person them. that uses yes. There's other quantum band users, but yes. Uh, yeah, jump ahead to August. Aaron Taylor Johnson is going to star in Craven the Hunter. Never heard of it. Major Spider-Man uh, foe, villain, enemy, whatever. I'm joking. Nemesis. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm yeah. curious about something in this movie, though. Big fuzzy, you know, furry coat. I'd be more excited if they weren't switching accents for some stupid reason in this movie. What do you mean? Well, Aaron is a British dude. Well, right. And he has a British accent. You think they're going to okay, give him, like, so some... so Craven is South South African, right? Right. You know, so then you have Russell Crowe's dad, who's doing a South African voice, but yet they're going to have Johnson do a regular old American accent. I don't know why these act... Like, I just... I don't... Hmm. Just, just stop with the accents. I, I will say this, that the trailer did pique my interest. Even though I think it's probably not going to be that great, I watched Bullet Train. He's in it, and I was like, dude, he's he's a badass. The dude shredded. He looks well, like he can beat the shit out of a lot of people. And just like you said, Deadpool three. Please don't bring in Doctor Doom. Please don't bring Spider Man in right away in this movie. No, but you know what? Don't, don't also even, don't reference him at all. Yeah, because don't they do that too. Like, oh, Spider Man doesn't even exist here. Don't do that either. Yeah. I hate it no. when they completely ignore or over embellish. Give us a full legitimate story of just this character. Build him up. Let us understand who he is. Make him a hero. I don't care. And then let us dis- discover, oh, we're supposed to hate you. Is Russell Crowe just like the new superhero dad? Well, yeah, he's Zeus. Zeus. <laughs> Jor-El. Now he's Craven's dad. Yep. And they're they got a gladiator too coming out at some point. Totally off topic, but I don't remember the name of the movie. But a couple of years ago, Russell Crowe starred in one about road rage. That was a good movie. That was such a good movie. It was screwed up, but it was such a good movie. Yeah, it, it's it was like an, a, a modern version. I think it was just called like Rage or something like that. But Falling Down was a movie about a guy who just was not having a good life and just went kind of nuts in New York one time. Or no, Los Angeles. I'm sorry. Los Angeles. Michael Douglas. And that movie reminded me, this this Road Rage movie. Very good. Very good. I mean, Russell Crowe, he's, uh, he's been good since The Quick and the Dead. Very good. So that comes out in August. Well, Unhinged. Unhinged. Yep. Yeah, I liked Road Rage Unhinged, better. Russell Crowe. If you're into uh, really screwed up Road Rage, it's a good movie. A lot better than I thought it was going to be. Basically, dude had a really bad day, and somebody ticked him off. Yes. Well, you know. So, more of the story, people, is don't be an ass. Don't get caught Kiss being an ass. ass? I don't... Point is, run people mm. over on motorcycles, but make sure it's in a video. In GTA. <laughs> <laughs> also in August, on the 9th, we have Borderlands, based off a video game. And uh, I saw a little bit of, of, I think there's a trailer out there. That might have been more, some of this I saw. Was there a Borderlands trailer? Or is there just photos of the trailer? Maybe I just watched photos. But anywho... A feature film based on the popular video game set in an abandoned fictional planet of Pandora where people search for a mysterious relic. Do you think they'll do like that weird shading style that they did in the games? Like somehow I never played the games. Really? Okay. No, I Uh, saw that the covers for the games always looked cool. Well, they always did like this weird like shading where they like, where there'd be a crease, they'd have like black ink, like a black line. Like, I don't know how. Okay. like, Like they'd really make the detail pop. I'm kind of curious if they'll try and mimic that somehow because there's a very unique point of the game, like very. Well, they need to. I know this isn't. It's not post-apocalyptic, but it seems like another more dystopian, Mad Maxian type thing. Yeah. So I mean, I'm. I think I'm more excited about Fallout than I am about Borderlands. But obviously, a TV show versus a movie. I am cautionly optimistic about this doing well in theaters. I know video games are getting a little bit better when it comes to movies now, but we're still... Yeah. With the, I, I, I think it's going to really depend on what early reviews are. I mean, nowadays, it's not even like, what is it, e- Eber and Rober or whatever their names are. Do you remember Cisco that? Cisco and Ebert. Yeah, 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 sure. <laughs> I always think of the Muppets... The two old guys. Yeah. Yeah. Up in the back. Ba- up in the back. But nowadays yeah. it's more along the lines of people like they pay streamers or not pay them, but they bring them to premieres. Well, like the Halloweenies podcast I listen to those people get. Yes. They get early screeners. screeners yeah. I think 
a lot of these video game movies and stuff are they're really going to be dependent on okay what did you know i don't know i don't, I don't know any popular streamers what did so and so think about it oh i value well, the ringer verse people they get them to their screeners you know they get all the yeah. they some of them got to watch the first four episodes of loki before anybody else you well, know disney sony all Lucky of you, you all of you out there we would like to be invited to one of these shindigs i would love to just review something or not even like fully review it just like is it good or bad like, like oh there's an embargo you can't talk about such and so you can't say bad that's fine well, i don't do social media that much anyway yeah, as you can either. tell by the tree of geek socials so yeah so you know it might do well might not i'm not super excited as the year goes on we'll find out i don't know but i am a little bit more excited more about august 16th for alien romulus oh yes because this is a little bit a different director this guy has been gestating this for a while um the guy i just started watching fargo okay the tv show fargo okay and he did some of the stuff in the first season noah howley i think is his name and uh so he's doing this and and i'm pretty excited i mean uh let's get some more alien i didn't think they were perfect the last couple movies but i like aliens i like predator I like it all. Oh, yeah. No, it's I love Alien. I love Predator. I'm just really curious to see, like, are they going to bring back, like, Ma Michael Fassbender for any of it? Or are they, they, they going to try and tweak in any of the previous ones? Well, it Where says, does this people fall? from a distant world must face the most terrifying form in the universe. From what I've heard, this is supposed to take place before Sigourney Weaver's stuff, but after Alien Covenant and all those movies. So it's somewhere in between there. See, I don't like that. I don't either because unless then every it, single person in it dies so that the word about these aliens can't get back to humanity because Sigourney Weaver was supposed to be the first time anyone ever actually really encountered them. Now I understand the the prequels, they were designed to show how these creatures really became to be Michael Fassbender, you know, freaking made them. But I, I don't like the idea of this isn't actually the first time we've encountered them. Like the first time, so when Scorpion v Weaver and all that shit goes down, it's the first time that, like, Earth gets, oh, shit, something happened out there. The other people never contacted back to Earth to let them know, I don't think, even though they send out another ship. When you start doing prequels, yep. things get screwed up. I am excited about this, but I am still, like with other stuff, optimistic, cautiously, because it might, I don't know. Like, I want to see a quiet place with super... xenomorphs. I felt really bad for the one scene where the horses get run down. Yeah. Yeah, I felt really bad for that. That happened. Yeah. But yeah, so Alien Romulus, you said Craven the Hunter. That comes out on the 30th. Yep. So we're up End into September. September. We are. We are. Coming down, the, but not a whole lot left here. Well, September, I'm actually kind of excited for this one. Uh, September 6th, we've got a heck of a cast coming into this one. Willem Dafoe, Michael Keaton, Winona Ryder, Justin, I don't know how to pronounce it, Thoreau. Th Therox, Therox, uh, dude from American Psycho. He was a mega mine. Monica Bellucci and <sighs> Jenna Ortega. Who's I, that? I, come on, really, <laughs> really. I may or may not be slowly forming a thing for Jenna Ortega. Okay, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> my my ultimate like movie cinematic whatever crush was always Natalie Portman, and I'm sorry, Natalie. I think I'm moving on. She's just crushed right now. She is. I'm sure she is. She was about to sign a she's deal to get into Star Wars head. again, and now she's just she's like, going to so shave her head like in V for Vendetta, but then run around like Britney Spears. She's going to be so upset. It's going to be horrible. She did it again. Oh man, yeah. Beetlejuice too, man. Dude, <laughs> oh I, yeah, I've seen a couple set photos, man. I am hyped. I don't want to see any more of it. This is one I have tuned out oh, no. of. Yeah, all, no, I will breaths. not look I'm up spoilers. Now. This one, all I know is that they are bringing back a lot of the original cast, and. I, I, I'm, I've got really high hopes for it. I loved that movie as I a kid. I got high hopes. It's actually one I wasn't allowed to watch as a kid. I had to wait till I was like in my teens to go watch it like on my own. Wow. Yeah. Man. Well, you're definitely going to... Are you going you to let your kids watch Beetlejuice too? Beetlejuice? When they're older. When they're older. Uh, I, I definitely... So they won't even watch Jurassic Park because it scares them. Jurassic Park is scarier than Beetlejuice. <laughs> well, <laughs> okay. But... Those koalas. Yeah, I, I, when they're a little bit older, yeah, I'll happily sit down and watch it with them because I love that movie. Like, it's such a Michael Keaton is gold in that movie. I I, I don't care what you say. Well, you'll probably agree. With I you. agree with you. Yeah, wow, you're, <laughs> he's gives me like the deadliest. I was like, I don't give a shit what you say. Like, I know you hate this deep down. I know you really do hate Halloween and all those type things. You will agree with me. 
Yeah. Dude, next I'm time. hyped for Beetlejuice too. Next time on the trip. Now King. this, you know, I might hear me out here. I might save up a couple pennies and I might go to the theaters and I might actually watch Beetlejuice too in the theaters. But I haven't said that about anything on this list. But I now, might go see Beetlejuice too. My biggest complaint though is it's the beginning of September. It's coming out. Like, why wouldn't you put that towards Halloween, towards the end of October? I don't know. Maybe you know what I mean? They're, Just, uh, you think Beetlejuice, and I don't know, if, if maybe it's just me, but like Beetlejuice, Casper, all those classic, you there's know. There's a lot of movies that they put around fall, but they don't like really. Maybe I mean, they actually don't want it's not them... technically fall, it's still summer. Well, maybe they don't want them to be like fall fully like, happen until later. almost like typecasting a movie into a certain genre. Like this, it kind of keeps it out in the open a little bit there's more. There's a lot of, back in the day, Halloween, the series, not all of them came out in October. Some of them came out mm. in the summer. Oh, really? Yeah. Like, like, uh. Wow. The Kevin Williamson one. Um, Season of the Witch. I don't know when that came out. <laughs> episode, or yeah, episode. The third movie, Halloween 3, that has absolutely nothing to do with Michael Myers. But I, I don't know why they're, I think they're missing an opportunity there as well there. Or maybe they're hoping it's going to ride out of the way through. Oh, it over. very well could though. Yeah, I mean, I have a feeling it's going to be one of the biggest money makers of the year, for sure. But the question is going to be, is it actually going to be a good movie? Well, I think it's be better than the next movie on our list. Because I know a lot of times, it's a complaint of mine. I know I've said it plenty of times, but whenever they wait so long to then suddenly drop a sequel that everybody's been waiting for, it falls on the, sometimes they fall on their face. Well, I think Ghostbusters is a good clue that if you had somebody completely invested in the fact that Tim Burton's involved and like, this is a creation yeah. out of his head, you well, know, Beetlejuice. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I think he's got a decent record. I think that they've shown what they could do with Ghostbusters when they, the one from two, two, three years when ago. When they don't do an all female cast with Thor's the secretary and listen, I, I, there's I'm not, parts of that movie look, I enjoy. I'm not being I sexist, do. but I hated that movie so much. I did not hate that movie. I oh man, I couldn't. I did not love it, but I didn't hate it. I, there was parts of it that I thought were fucking hilarious. I did. Did they involve Thor? I thought. Well, no, I was more talking about the uh, the janitor dude. I thought he he did some some funny things but that dance thing i mean what yeah i yeah, didn't think it was fun it was a fun movie i think people just want to hate All that right. movie just to hate it maybe just hate it to hate it. big maybe i'll give it another shot maybe oh i'm not saying don't waste your time what okay. i'm saying is <laughs> spark notes <laughs> they need a spark that, notes dude, he was movies. the funniest part of that movie chris helmsworth was the funniest part of that movie the whole fish tank oh my lord i mean he plays a great thor a great action star but in a lot of his movies he's hilarious he is. He's, like, he he's is. good comic. I've seen uh, Chris of Evans is the same way. In a lot of his movies, he plays a really good comic relief part. Yeah. I think. Except for uh, Fantastic Four. If they would have just had them be different people that weren't trying to redo the first one, and why don't bring Bill Murray in yeah. there and make him a different. Like, it was too much of a twist yeah. thing. But, but that's not what we're, we're talking about upcoming stuff. And. Rabbit Trail. Yeah. Uh, on the 13th, we got Transformers 1. Nope. No, we don't. Chris Helmsworth. Nope. Yeah, we do. No. We have another Transformers movie. <laughs> another Transformers movie. Because that's what we need. Transformers. The origin story more. of Cybertron. Oh, because that's what we needed. Yeah, home of both the Autobots and the Decepticons, in case you didn't know by now. All right, listen, The people. film is still said to focus on the relationship between Optimus Prime and Megatron. All that, right, listen, yeah. listen, listen, people. <laughs> if you give a flying F about any of these Transformers movies, just go watch the original animated series... You'll get all the information you need, the movie, and man. you can move on. I love the soundtrack to the animated movie. Oh, oh, it's yeah. fantastic. Oh, my word. Moving on, because I'm not giving Transformers any more time. We're moving into October with something I'm not excited about, but I have a feeling somehow it's going to rake in the oh, money. Uh, Real quick, Beetlejuice, what did you give that out of 10? I'm going to give it an A. Well, if I'm going to go see any theaters, I'm going to go 9. I, see, I was going 8. I was going 8. Transformers, 8. I'm going like 2. Oh, uh, yeah. Transformers is one of the... Which one do I want? If somebody said, Michael, right what? now you have to watch either Planet of the Apes <laughs> or Transformers. Which one? Well, I which, think this Transformers might well, be a cartoon. Which though. one is done by Michael know. Bay, though? I mean, neither. It, at the mo I don't think he's doing either of them. So there's no lens flares. Sir. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I might see the monkeys first. Ooh. Hey, hey, we're the monkeys. I might see Speaking it Speaking of musicals. Uh, no. <laughs> I was trying to avoid this one. Yeah. October 4th, Joker. Folia del. I don't, I don't speak French, but uh, Joker, that one word and that other word I said. Folie a deux is what I'm Folie reading. Folie a deux. A Oh, man. Come Joker on. Joker 2. Joker 2 is a sequel to the other one. Joaquin uh, Phoenix and Lady Gaga. Yeah. 
Arthur Fleck. That's, I, that's the joke in this one. Okay, so if they were just bringing her in as I know she's coming as Harley Quinn, but why they have to make the whole movie into a full blown? What was wrong with Margot Robbie, man? Right. <laughs> Nothing. I, I want to see Margot Robbie's uh, Harley Quinn and Lady Gaga's Harley she Quinn just shoot her. Just fight shoot it her out head. right next to Wolverine and Deadpool in that that oh, that man. prune zone. This is why I need a holodeck from Star Trek. Just make these things happen for sure. I'm not excited at all. No, at this one. This might be my actual. I would rather watch the Apes movie than this one. Oh, that's saying a lot. Because that first Joker movie this is was a musical. pretty good. I don't want a musical. Yeah. If this wasn't a musical, I'd be like, listen, Lady Gaga. She is a good actress, and we all know that Joaquin Phoenix is a good actor. Oh, yeah. Like, in the first movie, it was, uh, I liked it better than The Batman. I did. And I'm not, I don't care about The Penguin either. But why does it have to be a musical? I don't know. That's the part that's, that's messing with me here. Yeah, I, so, I do not like yeah. the fact that they're going full musical. And don't yeah, but get, if you guys are born knocked over, there you go. And don't get me wrong. Oh, I do occasionally like a good musical. And I say that simply because, like, The Greatest Showman with Hugh Jackman. Never watched it. it it's rated in probably my top ten. Like, I absolutely love that movie. He is a good singer-actor. Zac Efron, Dancer. you know, high school musical boy. I don't think I've ever seen him in anything other than uh, Neighbors. Really? And I... His down-to-earth he's documentary is absolute, amazing. It's I great. I saw it's it on great. Netflix, but I never it's watched good. it, really. It's very good. Well, that dude that he's with in the show, I'm going to throw I don't remember your name right now. You should play He-Man. <laughs> like just an older he-man he looks just like an older he-man but i'm sorry no but uh no i was just saying like i thought even his part was absolutely fantastic i loved that movie zendaya everybody in it was like a plus and i'll watch it again happily like we'll listen to the soundtrack every now and then because it's such a catchy you know well it's not that i hate musicals like all together you just didn't find the right one well no there was that show on uh tv that was a musical where kids were in school and it wasn't high school musical like all the uh, people are dying left and right that were on the show um interesting you know, glee glee i never i was oh. bored one night i was super never bored saw. back when i was a bachelor and i was flipping through caught part of an episode i was like that's pretty cool and i ended up binging the entire series i just know that that's where grant gustin really i guess got his is up yeah, and coming was up in there i forgot that he yeah. was in that so was uh melissa benoist ben- benoy benoy yeah. supergirl yeah she was in the later seasons yeah 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 that's why I, I was reading there's the like a curse of the people on that show well that's one of the reasons that them. when they were supergirl on the flash they did a musical episode together Oh, did they? Yeah, it was really bad. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, listen, there's not... Star Trek did a musical episode of Discovery, that, or not Discovery, but uh, Strange New Worlds this year, and it was really good. And I was, like, dreading that it was going to be good. But let me just say, or the bad. only series I've ever watched that they had a musical episode every season without fail, that I would go Family back... Guy. No. no. <laughs> I would go back and watch the, just those episodes because they're so good was The Magicians. Oh, The Magicians. The, every one that of one those. That one girl could sing, though. The, oh, the my brunette. word. Yes, yes. And she distracts everybody in the room. Dude, that woman could sing. I don't remember her name. Uh, I, I looked her up on IMDb once. I used to follow her on socials back in the well, day. Well, I looked but... her up on IMDb once. She's in, like, nothing. Like, she, she yeah, got out of people, acting. Yeah, some people just don't. But her voice is just absolutely amazing. Fantastic. And to this day, I can't hear the song Take On Me by Aha without getting a tear. Yeah. Like, yeah. Eric, anyway. <laughs> hey, did I tell you? We talked about this a long time ago, this show. But did I tell you my friend Eric tried to watch it and said it was boring? Well. He got, like, two seasons in. He's like, when does this get good? I'm like. Okay, if it you're was not good, into it, episode two. If you're not into it by now, walk away. Like, I, if it's not for you, it's not for you. But that's one of my absolute go tos. Listen, even John actually enjoyed it, and John hates everything. John does hate everything. Yeah, and he's like, "Oh, Magicians is a cool show." I'm like, John, what? did you just what did you just say? John to me? is the type. You floored me. I, I love you, John, but without a doubt, you, you'll Johnny. agree with me that if it's popular, John hates it. This is gonna be a running thing. We're just <laughs> just bring up John like every episode. <laughs> <laughs> one day well, here's the portion of john uh, yeah. here we go and now everybody wants a portion of john what grinds my gears with yeah. john <laughs> all right we need to move this along here uh let's go into november november i only have one thing in november that i actually care about well i only have one thing in november at all so what's your thing in november it involves tom hardy take it away take it the away third and final i do believe yeah they installment say in the venom trilogy until he shows up in deadpool and then uh, until up he shows up in deadpool and, and then the mcu heard. yeah so yeah tom hardy is coming back in november is there a set date for it i, just... I have eighth 
November. 8th. Okay, I can only find yeah. November. November 8th. And I will say after you know, let there be carnage. I'll I give it a seven just because I want. Yes, I want to see how they. I want to see up. how they wrap it up. And I feel like all the negative. Uh, I listen. The negative I, reviews that they got from Let There Be Carnage, I'm very confident that they're going to try and fix it. I mean, I know we trashed that movie, <laughs> but we there were a few good scenes in the movie, and I think that I they're going to bring it. Stand back Stand by together. what I said that Woody Harrelson was fantastic as Cletus Cassidy. He was just working with horrible writing. We'll leave it at that. But yeah. So, so I said seven ish. Seven, uh, yeah, seven, yeah, yeah, six, seven. seven. Okay. Um, yeah, I, like I said, 5, I'll go into a skeptical just because of how we left the series. But Tom Hardy is a fantastic actor. I think I first saw him in oh, first saw him as Captain Picard. Oh uh, no, no, come on, think, think, think. Was he was an American Sniper? No, Hurt Locker. No, what was it? I don't what think he's in either either of those. No, movies. I don't think it was either. Jeremy Renner was in Hurt Locker. Yeah, and no. then American Sniper was... Uh, Bradley Cooper. Yeah, him. He was in a war movie, Tom Hardy. I, I don't remember. I just can't remember which one it was now. Yeah, probably. I, I just remember thinking, like, hey, that guy's pretty good. Sure enough, he... No, he's... he's, he, he's like Bradley Cooper to me, where everything he's in, he brings a whole new... Peaky Blinders, flavor man. To it. Seriously, Fantastic. this again? Tom Hardy was in Peaky Blinders. I'm going to have to watch Peaky Blinders. He was Blinders. great, dude. Great. One of the best characters in that entire show, Tom Hardy. Who do you prefer, Tom Hardy or... Bradley Cooper? Yeah. I mean, I've been friend of Bradley. Oh, friends, yeah. I wish we were friends. We'll go, to, <laughs> right? let's go check the Phillies game together. Um, I mean... The Eagles game. Um, it's Bane I, versus... Rocket. Silver Linings <laughs> playbook. <laughs> um, I, I think I'm more of a Bradley Cooper guy. Um, dep- I don't know. He's... he's a, he was so Weasley in the Wedding Crashers, but so good as Rocket. And dude, I like the A Team. I thought he was great in the A Team. Yeah, so so good. He played face. Didn't yeah, he? yeah. The whip up some quesadillas. He says, Man. "Great movie." But Tom Hardy, don't don't get us wrong. We we love you. Oh, dude, I would you play Picard, man. Be Picard in my heart forever. Even though you were a clone and you were a Romulan and you died. Uh, I'm trying to find the movie he was in that I'm thinking of. Oh yeah, Inception, Mad Max. Yep. But what was the? You go ahead and continue. I'm gonna, know. I'm well, gonna try and find Dunkirk. Dunkirk. That I, might I never have watched been Dunkirk. It. That might have been it actually. That wasn't that long ago. It, it wasn't. And that was the first time you saw Tom Hardy. Well, it was the first time I really like realized who it was. Even though the Bane Batman stuff was like five, six years before. It was a big guy with a mask. I, I never looked him up. Well, I'm very I, disappointed I, in you. I'm gonna keep looking. It might not have been Dunkirk, but I think it was Dunkirk. Was he in the uh, the airplane movie? He wasn't in um, that Pearl Black Harbor, Hawk was he? Down. Black Hawk. Oh, it was yeah. Black Hawk Down. Yeah, I was okay. That that was a while okay. ago. That was what 2001. A movie. Eric Bana. What? A, I'm a huge Eric Bana fan, gonna, and that was great. I'm gonna cut that whole part about Dunkirk out. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it was Black Hawk it. Down. Uh, uh, it's a coming flick. Oh my word. It's I remember that was being one of the in the few... military, like riding on the bus. That's all anybody ever wanted to watch. Just on repeat. Let's just put Black Hawk on. Down that was on, one of the few, over. like one of the first movies I saw. Because oh one, I'd have been in high school still. I graduated in oh one. Okay. Yeah. Well, and I remember like that was one of the the first movies I'd seen that like really gave me anxiety and put me on edge. Oh, well, it's like, full force. It's like go 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 go. Things are blowing up. Like and the it's... scene where he jumps in like the masquerade, pulls a body on top. Like, my heart, I remember my heart was like coming out of my throat. Like that, and uh, was Enemy at the Gates, the snipers movie. Oh, that's a good flick. That's a good Those flick. Those were two of my, like, yeah. I'm uh, not even a huge war movie. I'm not guy, either. But they were, they were good. No, yeah. me either. Like, I didn't even see um, Saving Private Ryan. I saw it way later. I, I didn't even see it till like within the last 10 years. Oh, well, I saw it like, like five years within the five year time no. it came out, but. All right, let's move on to December. December. All year from now ish. Excited for that one. Well, my kids are excited for this one. Are you? Well, I didn't watch the last one. I saw the first one. But anyway, the 20th, we got Sonic the Hedgehog 3 in theaters, the third installment that's supposed to introduce Shadow. Now, I only played like the first two games on Sega Genesis. <laughs> After then, I. Didn't... Shadow is a version of sonic from like a darker alternate spacey realm i don't even know how to explain it i just know what i've seen about him from my kids watching He's the bad sonic ish 
He's uh, some of the cartoons I've seen them um, watch. He's bad. Sonic. Some of them he helps, but he's got like an attitude. Oh, so he's just uh, he's punk. He's he's yeah. punk Sonic. I mean, like, okay. I always grew up knowing like okay, Sonic Tales and Knuckles was the bad one. Is James Marsden gonna be in this one? Like he was the first Probably. one. Probably. Is he in the second one? I don't know. Oh yeah, he's uh, in the second one. Yeah. I see. Okay. I want to see him like take off his sunglasses and like shoot Sonic with lasers, but that's the wrong franchise. Right. So. Oh, I'm, I'm telling you, in Deadpool 3, we'll get a Sonic Cyclops. <laughs> do you Deadpool think, 3 is going to have everything. Do you, uh, so I did I did read that, uh, I, I can never pronounce her name, that played Jean Grey. Famke Jansen. Thank you. She is coming back for some type of cameo, I guess. I don't know if it's in Deadpool 3 or if it's in a future X-Men franchise, but I did read that she vaguely confirmed she will return as Jean Grey at some point for something. Maybe it's a flashback. I don't know. But I'm really curious to see who all they're going to get. Like, do you think they'll get Halle Berry? Do you think they'll get well, James they're, they're Marston? Toad. I mean, like, yes. everybody's. I mean, Kelsey tooth. Grammer as Beast. Yeah. I mean, they might bring back somebody that's blue and hairy who. They, they might, might not. I don't know. All I do know is that's all I have of a f- mostly official of the air. I was going to do a very quick rundown of stuff that's supposed to come out in the air. We're not sure. We can just ping pong through these here. Well, not even ping pong. We can just go through them real quick. And uh, then we'll wrap this up. First up, Agatha, Dark Cold Diaries, Agatha All Along, Disney Plus. This is finally happening this year. It's been filmed. We don't know exactly when. Where they said it's probably earlier in the year. Catherine Hahn. Catherine Hahn. She's now, a hilarious lady. Are hilarious. they gonna is it gonna be based back then? Like back it's in, in the, Westview. In Something the... happens in Westview. Oh, okay. Because so, we know that even though the uh, the hex was released. Well, I'll, I'll just redo the synopsis because I took the time to do these. Well, okay then. Um, when okay. a new series of tragedies strikes the city of Westview again, the newly reformed Agatha Harkness will be forced to join forces with the reincarnation of her former enemy son, Billy Kaplan, to discover the force from the past that is causing chaos in Westview as she seeks redemption for her past mistakes. Um, and you get Aubrey Plaza in here, too. It's supposed to be somewhat of a pseudo villain. And that's just going to be great because I love me some Aubrey Plaza. I just love her, like, her deadpan. Her, well, have you seen her, like, on stage and things with Jenna Ortega? Yes. Fantastic. Fantastic stuff. Um, House of the Dragon Season 2. Very excited for. I loved Season 1. Um, continuing the stories of the Targaryens and all the badassery that comes with them. More dragons, more people getting killed. It's going to be great. Are you excited about Rings of Power Season 2? Very much so. Very much so, yes. because that's on this list as well. So it's... I can get upset even more. <laughs> it gets like, what? Why is this happening? Well, and we're still waiting for the giant tidal wave. Yeah, it's just kind of like in limbo right now, just yeah. waiting. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. It never freaking happened. Nope. It didn't happen. Well, they had to explain all the other things like the uh, the goblin dudes who want to dig through the ground. They're just digging tunnels. Digging Yaw. tunnels. So let's dig our tunnels onto the next one. The boy season four, baby! That I'm excited about. Oh, yeah, it takes place after season three, because that makes sense. But we're going to get... <laughs> it does take place after Gen V. I yeah. have seen screenshots of the trailer, but I chose to purposely not watch the trailer. I, I watched the teaser. That's it. That I did see the teaser, um, but not like the full on. No, I, it's not I just out watched, yet, but I'm not going to watch There's no actual trailer. trailer yet. It was just the teaser. I there was. It but... flashed through. We see some characters, some Blood. new, some. Blood. You know, we see some new characters. We see some old characters. Yeah, and the teaser ends with just Homelander soaked in blood. Like, I don't know what to expect out of this. I saw a, uh, a thing on, it was probably instagram somewhere it was like a behind the scenes of when homelander is next to the hospital bed with the the racist um nazi lady and she's uh helping him and he's trying not to laugh (laughs) (laughs) they're they're shooting his scene he's like every time i look down like i just couldn't stop oh that show is so twisted i'm so excited for this oh, it is. i don't know why they're not like some of these shows are so good why are no dates i know what is know. coming out man did i tell you i finally started reading the boys comic you did i, I got a hold of them Ooh. and i finally started reading it they are so much more screwed up than the show yes in different aspects yeah like it's not it like, doesn't have that cinematic feel but wow there's some oh, fragged up yeah. things that happen yeah so bad 
Oh, man. Uh, yeah, I, I'm really excited to see where this is going to go. I did read it's going to take place after Gen V, and supposedly uh, things from Gen V are going to directly affect... I think affect it's, like, right it. after. Yeah. Like, it's like a, the week after. It's going to, like, directly affect Season 4. So I'm, I'm... Yep. The end credit scene of Gen V involving Billy Butcher, that's all I'll say, is going to play a huge part, apparently. I'm, I'm, I'm amped. I, I told you. Amped. Yeah. That's, a, that's an easy 9 out of 10. For sure. Maybe even a 10. I don't know. Yeah, oh, that... As far as like TV show goes, it, it might be in my top three. Spider Man Beyond the Spider Verse hitting theaters. We're getting that final chapter, and you guys know how much we ranted and raved, how much we loved the previous installment. Yeah, this one. So the first two, I waited till I could download them. Uh, they're streaming, and I could go get Maybe them. Maybe we can go to the theater together on this. I one. was just gonna say I would genuinely love to go to the theater for this because we we both said it a hundred times. It's a they're works of art. We'll take John. We won't tell him what we're going to see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm excited. Yes. So excited. And, and that, that's well, it. I'm excited about a Spider-Man property. I know. What? I'm very excited for what, you. This guy? No. Well, and the way they ended the second one was like, build up, build up, build up, and credits. So it's like, what the what? I remember I was so ticked off, and I'm like, you know what? I'm not ticked off. I'm excited because that means they're not cramming it all in. No, I was ticked off when I watched The Matrix 2 and then it just ended. Oh, I was no. like, wait, what? No. This, I was like, oh, okay, you sons of bitches. All right. Okay. All right. Yeah, well, well I'll, I'll wait. I'll it play was, your game, Sony. It was genuinely one of the best cliffhanger endings I think I've ever seen. Like, the way they did it was a beautiful wrap up, but this it also. Oh, I was about to say. It something. kept you wanting yeah. so much more. Yeah. I, I want more. That's why I'm excited. Ooh. I also want more of X-Men 97. It is a yes. continuation of the animated oh. series from the uh, 90s, 92 <laughs> to like 95, <laughs> 97. Well, that's why it's called it. Yeah. Which yeah. I, following when we <laughs> talked about this a long time ago. Long time way, ago. Yeah, yeah. I did look up the song that you said was basically a direct ripoff, and yeah, they're pretty dang close. They are. <laughs> like, yeah. That dude, give that guy some money. Like, yeah. come on. But yeah, continuation of the uh, cartoon. I'm happy for it. Then we get Waller, which is a Amanda Waller. Amanda Waller. Yep. This takes place right after uh, Peacemaker season one. So it's going go on right after that. I'm still it's waiting for Peacemaker HBO. season two. Well, listen, Peacemaker's still going to be in the new thing. I think James Gunn's waiting to do. Oh, he is keeping him. Yeah, he's keeping oh, him. So goodness. yeah, um, I knew so he was keeping Blue scene. Beetle. Yeah, and he was technically keeping the Flash, but he was going to be the actor was getting changed. Uh, I do know also Art 2. You don't care about this, Art but two? Arc Art 2, 2 is set to come out early 2024. Uh, it, it's essentially a game, think crafting, et cetera, like high definition Minecraft, but with dinosaurs. They can either kill you or you can train them and ride them and fantastic game. I mean, oh, super. Cool. It'd be like a raptor in blue and then you can just train yeah. with like cat treats and stuff. It'd super cool. popular and they're bringing out a second one finally. It's It's been long, long awaited. Well, shout out to all you ARK fans out yeah. there. Hell yeah, man. Hell yeah. Very good game. And uh, I also wrote down Peacemaker Season 2. Like it's, I don't know if it's going to happen in 2024, but it is rumored to happen maybe towards the end of 2024. But Waller, I'm, I'm pretty sure is coming out. And then the final season of Superman and Lois, season four. They're getting into a final season. I didn't watch any of the seasons, but this one's supposed to wrap it up. I don't know much to say about that because I didn't watch it. I'm not super excited. You know, maybe I'll watch it someday, but probably not. Uh, and not really, I wasn't really happy about the casting of the guy they chose to do Superman. I've seen him in a few things. Good actor, but not yeah. a Superman for me. Yeah. And uh, for our buddy John, got to come right back to him. I'm sorry to tell you that... Uh, Early, I think it said like February, March ish. Destiny, the final shape. Oh, I, you know, I did have it on a list, but I didn't everything really I've read, about it. everything I've read Destiny. said it is an actual wrap up. Yeah. We'll see. Well, there you go for all you Destiny, Xbox, well, sorry, P, Destiny please. 2. Destiny 2, reshaped. Reshape my opinion. One and day. Final Maybe Fantasy 7, Rebirth. I don't know what they're going to do with that. That is, but. listen, I looked into this because I was confused because there's so many Final Fantasy. I guess it's a remastered remake with new content of an older game. Like it's not a new game. So they're but just they've going already back to the remastered. Well, them. listen, they've I, already remade them. Well, that that's what's happening as well as Creature Commandos on Max, which is a cartoon. 
part of the new DCU. Yeah, it's going to be like some James Gunn shoot 'em up thing type things, like some Suicide Squad type deal, only with some creatures that are commandos. Or they go commando. There's a suicide squad. Or maybe squad they like game. the movie Commando. There's a Suicide Squad game coming out too. Is there? Do you remember the movie Suburban Commando with Hulk Hogan? Hulk Hogan, yes. And yeah. uh, what was his name? Emmett Brown. What's his name? Um, Doc Brown. Oh, uh, the Christopher real guy. Lloyd. Yes. Yeah, it was not a very good movie. Oh, it was awesome. Like, mm. it's so bad. It was awesome. It falls into that category of, like, the last action hero, where it's not a good movie, but it's an amazing movie. Undertaker was in it, too. He's, like, this big, tall godly. He speaks with this really squeaky voice. Seriously? You, Ramsey. Yeah, they took his voice out oh, and put in a squeaky voice. Not being yeah. a wrestling fan, I wouldn't have recognized him, but now that I'm older... He's one of the bounty hunters that's trying to get Hulk Hogan. Okay. Yeah. See, there we go. For uh, subscriber content someday, we should like watch some of the crappiest B-list movies we can find. You no know, Holds Barred with yeah. uh, Zeus you and know, Hogan. What was that? Mystery Science Theater 3000? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, you know, it's so fun to sit there and watch a movie and just crack jokes. I finally jokes get and... you to watch Zombiever with me. The Zombie Beavers? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Uh, ugh, or was uh, it uh, Tucker and Dale? Tucker and Dale's good, oh, though. I love that movie. I like Tucker and Dale. Yeah. Well, uh, The Walking Dead, The Ones Who Live, they're bringing back Michonne. They're bringing back Rick. They're making a TV movie or what? something. We don't know if Rick's alive. Yeah, you do. He's, Last he's we saw him, he was being taken away in a hell of a Last thing I know, I had to watch Daryl Dixon in France with Emily. Oh, that, so was, that was horrible. I didn't like that. It, it was something. Yeah. It was, I, 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 when they killed the tiger, I checked out. I was like, I'm, I'm over this, dude. That's I'm like, out. our buddy John's obsessed with it. Uh, he loved that, uh, what was the Before the Walking Dead? What was that called? The Before the Walking Dead? Yeah, there, there was a, a series that came out of like, as it happened. Oh, yeah. I never... I didn't I like know, that at I all. I never tried to even watch that. I was nah, not... He, he was really into that one John? for a while. Yeah. Because I know we used to go over and watch with his wife, The Walking Dead, for a while. But then they killed the tiger, and then we kind of stopped watching as a couple. We were like, no, we're good. I used to go to my buddy Jordan's house and watch it, and then they... Shout out to Negan, though. He's cool. Well, see, I hated him at this point, because I quit watching it right around Hashtag the time... Negan was right. Right around the time that... Uh, Glenn? Sentry, yeah. Yeah. That, that Glenn got taken out, who has been announced as a, I don't know if official, but highly possible. We're like 90% he's Sentry. Yeah, he's going to be Sentry. Yeah. I don't like that. Yeah, I, he's Steven Young, great actor. And listen, I've been watching me some season two of Invincible, which is fan-freaking-tastic. But I don't know. I mean, they're going a different route, I guess. So, yeah, we'll see. So yeah, I uh, bought a Kindle version of the first episode, first episode, uh, the first issue of Invincible. So I, I didn't get started yet. I'm finishing up another uh, comic book. That's what I use my Kindle for, comic books. Okay. Uh, and I'm actually really excited to get into it because everything I read online is basically saying it's, it, it almost has a boy's feel, but it's more from the superhero point of view. Yeah, it does have a boy's feel. I wouldn't say it's as sexually graphic. Okay, but it's violent like that. Yeah, I mean okay. there there is some some sexual things in it, but it's not like vulgar. So it's me, not like me, eight yeah, it's pages not in. They're saying either do this deed or you're out of the seven. Right. There's gotcha. the guy that makes jokes about stuff, but it's not. Well, the cartoon's not like so graphic. Like you see like a chick in the shower, but there's like the steam or something. Okay. You know I mean? Like you like people so, are fucking in the shower, but you're not like. So, seeing full on so other than it. violence they keep it clean so to right speak. Yeah. okay okay See, a lot of blood that. though a lot of people getting i do cut appreciate and, that yeah i don't appreciate that as much but okay yeah. so um how about time bandits i was never i wanted to watch a tv movie i think it has sean astin in it uh, sounds came right. out like early 90s yeah. or something like around the time of Beastmaster and xena and stuff maybe i never got a chance to watch it but apple tv is bringing this back um, television adaption of Terry Gillen's 1981 film Time Bad Pan uh, Time Bandits Time Pandas Time Pandas, <laughs> <laughs> which centers around a young boy who discovers a time traveling portal in his bedroom. Now, I did hear though that the creator of the book says Gillen was on the set because I think Taika Waititi's doing this, and the guy walked off because Taika has been known to, I guess, change a lot of things in the properties oh, he yeah. does. Yeah. And this guy, he created the book series and he was like pissed at Taika and he's like, right. this is stupid, I'm walking off. Just so you know, you said Sean Astin earlier. Was it, was it not him? It's Sean Connery. It's from 1981. The no, they're not the movie. There was, I could have swore there was another, 
Well, he couldn't. Sean Connery wasn't the boy. Who was the young boy that was in the movie? Sean Connery can be whatever he Sean wants. Connery. Epic rap battle <laughs> between the James Bond and Mike Myers. That's classic. You should check that one out. Now, the uh, SNL skit with Sean Connery, Jeopardy. I'll tell you something right now, said, Trebek. That's not what your mother said. <laughs> or said of Let Us Know, he's like, lay tits now. <laughs> Just say a number. Write down your name. What is your name? What did you write down, Sean? <laughs> Jared Ferguson. <laughs> <laughs> man we're dating ourselves right now man that, that... <laughs> yeah i made a comment uh the other day to somebody i think it's somebody i work with about a fat guy in a little coat and they're like what and i'm like fat guy down by the river <laughs> in a van like you don't know oh man <sighs> come Rick, here richard <laughs> man if you could put chris farley in any marvel position what would it be like any role. Yeah. You mean like position? I was like, whoa, <laughs> put him in a Deadpool movie. That's what I just said. That's what I just heard. No, Chris Farley, any Marvel movie. Any. To make it funnier? Any uh, role. Hmm. I would want him to be Zeus. Chill, baby cake. <laughs> I don't know, man. Jeez. Any Marvel. Chris Farley as Thanos. I don't know. I just make him the blob. The blob. Oh, that's awful. But he would make it good. That is true. He'd yes. make it good. And I'm reading this. Did you know Ian Holm was in Time Bandits? No shit. Yeah. Ian Holm's he's older than he you think he is though. Oh yeah. I mean he's Bilbo. Well, which... this Fargo season one has has Bilbo or no Ian Holm is yeah, Bilbo, like the yeah. older version. Yeah, but this one has uh the other guy from the office that plays the original office. In the Hobbit movies, he plays Bilbo, but he's like a yeah, dude I know in Fargo. Yeah. It's funny though, because like everybody's, you know, it's I funny mean, that we're referencing the same I mean, Bilbo talking, type shit. Yeah. I know. Well, I didn't know this. I just found this out the other day that Ian Holm, who played Bilbo in the Lord of the Rings trilogy, yeah. not the Hobbit movies. Yeah, the old one. He was the old one. Yeah. Old Bilbo. He voiced Frodo. In the really early animated Lord the, of the Rings movie. The, the tank and Franken, uh, whatever you call it, movies that my mom watched yeah. over and over again. I guess he voiced Frodo in those. I didn't know that. Which makes it so much better when you think about it. I love that type of shit, dude. I just, I love it. When people come back for that stuff? Yeah. But sadly, he passed away a couple years ago. So. He was and he was an alien. Yes, he was. He was, uh... He was the android in the first one. The, the milk guzzler. Yeah, fucking milk toast. <laughs> what else it's you got? It's just French toast. <laughs> what else oh, you got? I'm almost done here, I swear. Just some oh, Star Wars yeah, bullshit. We have rabbit trailed so far. Yeah. So after Time Bandits, uh, the rest of the stuff on my list is all Star Wars related, pretty much. We right, have... So we're done, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody gives a shit. Uh, <laughs> see you later. <laughs> oh, man. Like, I mean, even the people that love Star Wars at this point are like, we get it, dude. We get it. Um, so we're getting Star Wars Skeleton Crew. We're getting the Bad Batch Season 3. That's the end of that series. We're getting Andor Season 2. Never finished the first one. And The Acolyte. So you're going to get some bunch of Star Wars content, possibly towards the end of the year. I think it's going to be pushed to 2025, but it was still on a lot of lists. And Did I only you... say that because just now they're talking about casting. I mean, Andor 2 apparently has been filmed or something. They just haven't put it out. Did you ever get around to watching Ahsoka? I did finish the whole entire series, yes. How was it? I enjoyed it. Really? Okay. Yeah, I did. Um, poor, it, the whole Ray Stevenson thing is really horrible. You know, the passed away. Yeah. I really dug his character. I know some people have some gripes that didn't do much with him. But he like he's built up for season two, and so I don't know what they're gonna do there. Um, and the very last thing I have, Terrifier three. It's coming out around Christmas apparently. Art the clown is set to unleash his chaos on the unsuspecting residents of Miles County as they peacefully drift off to sleep on Christmas Eve. For all you horror movie fans that have seen Terrifier one or two and enjoy the absolute ridiculous gore and the practical effects in those movies, Terrifier three for Christmas. That's that's the present I want, man. Hell yeah. You can have mine. It is like Saw meets Hostel on like meth and crack. Like it is just brutal to the max. They're great. And that's that's what I that's the calendar for 2024, folks. That's what we got coming for you. Well, no, I mean, we don't I didn't bankroll any of these things. If I did, there'd be different actors in different plot lines. But that's what we have seen that's coming out. That's some of the stuff we're excited for, some of the stuff we're really not excited for. We might cover some of these things. We will not cover Transformers One. Or Terrifier Three, apparently, according <laughs> to Josh. No, no, no. Uh, probably not a lot of Star Wars straight I'm up. I'm still waiting on uh, Terra Nova to make another season, but that's never going to happen. No, no, no. We get that stupid pit show on NBC, the yeah. La Brea. Like, 
what like you see the cgi like this is 2023 people why are the, why does saber tooth tiger look like that terra nova i got that was, that was a while back oh yeah and it was on a shoestring budget what a great show that was that was that it was really good. was man that, simple I'm, premise of going back to prehistoric earth in order to you know survive because current earth was too polluted and everything and hey premise. guess what there's dinosaurs yeah good actor too at uh had the dude from Avatar in it. Oh, yeah. I really like that show, actually. So oh, there well. you go. If you think we missed something, if we got your excitement peaked for something, whatever it may be, let us know. Go to thetreegeek.com. Absolutely. And, uh, and I'm glad that you stuck around all through our growing pains in the first season. I hope you stick with us in this season, too. We're hoping that you stick with us till season 17. I mean, I might be a geriatric by then, and, you know. Oh, you will. Have to have yeah, you will. you will. Yeah, this yeah. will all be VR at that point, so. Well, AI. AI. Yep. They'll have killed us all by then anyways. So <laughs> <laughs> It's coming. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, treeofgeek.com. Uh, you can hit the contact us link at the very top. Send us your uh, your input, your opinions, your you know hate mail, whatever you're gonna send us. Just send it and spread the word. Tell your friends about us. Yeah, oh, if yeah. you think like, dude, you gotta hear these these fucking guys. Tell your friends. Come on. Oh yeah. Find us on social media: Instagram, Facebook. We are YouTube? now YouTube audio only. Uh, other than the fancy picture I put up with the graph. Uh, yeah, one our, day, one our, day. Our, if you really like what you hear, don't hesitate to reach out to us. We really want to hear what you have to say. If you have ideas for future episodes, if you yeah, have we some, need some feedback. Ideas. Toss us some ideas. Yeah, man. please. Toss it all out. All of it. Comment on Let fa- it all hang out. Find us on Facebook and Instagram. Comment. Find us on YouTube. Comment. Find our website. Send us uh, an email. And then you email. comment. You should probably comment. You could, no, you can't comment. You can send us an email, though. Oh, okay. And, of course, if you guys really like what we're doing, consider becoming a subscriber on the uh, on treeofgeek.com. Anywhere from 3 to $10 a month, and you'll get exclusive content that we haven't made yet because we don't have any subscribers. So Listen, Josh needs to buy more comic books. He has a crippling addiction. Uh, I do. Subscribe. Uh, I, I do. But that's no. not what the money will go to. No, it's to help me out with this microphone that's getting all moldy because I don't have enough money to wash it because, you know... The money will go towards upping our equipment, upping our uh, quality. And hey, who knows? Maybe one day we'll be able Send to Send me afford... to podcast school. Somebody pay for me to go to is podcast school. Is that a thing? School. That'd be know. awesome. That would, that would be cool. If you really like what we're hearing. Somebody scamming people if it is. <laughs> if you really do like what we're hearing, though, and you want to hear more, things like that will help us push to weekly episodes rather than bi-weekly. In the future. In the far future. Yeah. Well, this has been the H-Train, Jugga Jugga. This has been old Josh, young Josh. I don't know. Uh, well, who? Meet, meet <laughs> <in> middle-aged Josh. <laughs> anyway, thanks for swinging along with us through this Absolutely. time-traveling, twisting journey. And I can't wait to see. Well, I don't ever see you guys. Send me a bit. What do you look like? No, don't send pictures. ASL. We'll get no, horrible kidding, things. Kidding. No, let's not do ASL, that. Really? <laughs> yeah, send Cut us a, that out. Send us a message on ICQ. <laughs> uh, <laughs> This is off the rails real, real fast here. (laughs) It has been great. Uh, This is season two, episode one, ending on a very optimistic note. I can't wait to get in your ears for the next episode. I mean, because you can't say, oh, I can't wait to see you. But me, I can't wait to invade your eardrums. I can't wait to just caress your inner eardrum. Tickle, tickle. Later, guys. Take care, everyone. And gals. And we'll see you in two weeks. 